Tick tock, time to rock. Yes, Good sir. evening, all you people who are complaining in the chat. <laughs> Do you have any <laughs> idea what our lives are like? Oh man, tell me about wife, it. Wife, wife just got back four minutes ago from a funeral. I'm stuck here with all the kids, taking mm. care of all the kids, and you guys, where are you, David? Where are you? Why aren't you on here? Huh? <laughs> huh? Let me go over to Oh, go over to Al Fadi's. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're almost, they're almost done anyway. I'll switch to Jay Smith and Al Fadi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm a psychopath, and they're more heartless than I am. You, you, you imagine this, man? <laughs> they've, turned me, they've turned me into a very angry, angry bitter old man. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, hi to everyone who's, uh, who's greeting us here. Um, who do we got over here? We got Air Church. We got Niles Guy. We got Anthony A, Gerard Perry, uh, Paul Trigg, Lisa Look. Hey, where are all the uh, uh, which uh, which Muslim friends do we have with us this yeah. evening? Because as soon as we say we want to talk about Jehovah's Witnesses or any other topic, they want to come in there. We could say that we're going to have uh, a, a live stream on our favorite cereal, and that's all we're going to talk about. And Muslims would yeah. jump up in the chat and start insisting that we blast Muhammad. It's like yeah. they're it's like they're addicted to hearing the truth yeah. about their fake prophet. So, um, what, what Muslim friends do we have in the chat this evening? Now, okay. now, now, Sam. Yes, sir. If the, if the same Muslims don't show up when we say we're gonna talk about Muhammad's night journey and wreck Muhammad's night journey, yes. but they'd show yes. up for anything else. This is just, this is weird, man. This, Isn't it? This is weird and creepy. Even, even when we were talking about Joe's witnesses, they decided to show up and turn it into a discussion about Islam. Yeah. So now they can't, they we're can't talking resist. about Islam, Muhammad. They got to show up. <clears throat> they're drawn to us, man. Deep down, they're drawn to us. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they can sense our rugged manliness and our knowledge. <laughs> hey, someone said, "I'm Muslim. Jesus is God." What? I'm Muslim. I'm Jesus Mus is God. Wow. Full in Christ. S. I'm Muslim. Jesus is God. Hmm. Interesting. That might be someone just messing around. Um, oh, there we go. <clears throat> we got Shakir yeah. Muhammad here. Yeah. Shakir Muhammad. Because Dr. Wood was destroyed by Muhammad Hijab. Here we go again. <laughs> I would also see Sham yeah. versus Hijab. Uh, Sam Shamoon, you've been challenging Muslims to, uh, yes. for the past couple months, to, yeah. I think, some a very, very balanced set of topics. Uh, one yes. was, does the Bible teach the Trinity? Two, yes. does yeah. the Quran teach Tawheed? And three, uh, what does the Quran say about the Bible? Is it is it something like those? Yes, yes, okay. exactly. <clears throat> Shakir, Mah like Shakir Muhammad said he would love to see you debate sure. Muhammad Hijab. Do you hear? Do you hereby agree to yes. face Muhammad Hijab right here on Absolutely. this channel? I'm the most balanced moderator Absolutely. in the world. Do Absolutely, you agree. Those three topics, Muhammad Hijab. Absolutely. Now, All right. Just to remind people, though, and by the way, guys, do pray for us, especially me. For the past two weeks, my voice <clears throat> has been attacked, and Lord Jesus will be done. I pray that he gives me perfect you know, healing so I can use my voice. But, you know, if, he, if I get worse, you know what the Muslims are going to say, David? <clears throat> Allah and his messenger are punishing, punishing that for Look, they're, take, they're taking away his voice. Allahu Akbar! They're but guys, pray in Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, to purify us, wash us. Holy Spirit, fill us with health and life and holiness. In Jesus' name, my voice stays strong. David's voice stays strong so we can wreck Islam and glorify Christ. Now, for those of you who don't remember, Muhammad Hajab contacted me and told me that the only condition he will debate me is if I meet him in a ring and we have a fight in the ring. Now, I told him, well, you give me about nine months, I'll train, and I'll wreck you and your friend, Ali Dawa. He goes, no, right now. I said, well, I haven't trained. I got to get, because you guys know when someone wants to fight, they have to train, go into intense training. Give me about nine months. I got the right guy. He's a believer, loves Jesus Christ. And I'll be more than happy to enter the ring, you know, because it'll be legal and official. I'll wreck you and Ali Dawa. He insisted, no, right away. I go, okay, well, that's that was his excuse. His excuse and condition is, David, I got to fight him in the ring before he debates me intellectually. Wait. And then not only that, David, someone it, it, else it kinda, just it, recently. It kind of shows ahead. it kind of shows the mentality, though. Right. I mean, yeah. if, if if you're saying if you're saying, uh, hey, I will not uh, I will not debate you unless you fight me first. It yeah. kind of it kind of shows that you don't really want to debate. Right. Because, I mean, think about this. 
People are people are locked inside because of coronavirus. Uh, lots of people are at home. Lots of people don't have much to do except uh, go online and do stuff. It's hard to travel now. And you've got all these guys who are constantly cranking out videos. They obviously have time. And you've got the Muslims in the chat. Well, why aren't you facing Adnan Rashid? Why aren't you? Why aren't you facing Farid, who's wrecking you and destroying you? Why aren't you facing Mohammed Hijab? Yeah. We're we're sitting here night after night, guys. If they want to come on here, they're welcome. We'll they'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll divide up the time. There will be equal time. And so notice, notice, uh, notice, Shakir. Uh, that's on them, right? <laughs> we can't we can't we can't force people. To, you're saying I want to see him face Sam Shamoon. Sam Shamoon says okay. Set the time and the place. Your guy yeah. isn't the one is the one who won't who won't want to come on, right? Exactly. And you have to you have to ask why. I mean, why wouldn't he? I mean, we have a ton of Christian viewers right now. Um, would be would be pretty straightforward uh, if he's gonna if he's gonna destroy Sam. Um, yeah, yeah. But y yeah. yeah, I mean, you can you can imagine the interesting stuff we'll have, Sam. But you know, you, you know, if you hear if you hear uh, hijab, he, he's gonna blast you, man. He's gonna tell you, hey, man, Allah prays for Muhammad, not to Muhammad. That's it. Game over. I lose the debate. I have to concede. That's it. It's over for me. But just one thing also, David, not only him, another guy, a Canadian convert to Islam, calls me and says, I will debate you, but you're going to have to do a boxing match with me, a charity boxing match before I debate you. So all these guys want to physically fight before they debate, and that's their condition. Now, folks, listen, I haven't been in the gym in a while. I haven't been in martial arts in a while, but I promise you, I will be more than happy. This is, again, go back. Study martial arts. Give me about a year, and I'll go in the ring, professional, legal, with any of them. That's my honest to God, you know, position. But you got to give me some time. I haven't been in the gym. I haven't done martial arts in years, and I'm 48. I'm not young like I used to be. But you know what? I still got those reflexes, baby. Stop! Oh! Anyway. Yeah. And 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 by the way, everyone, uh, everyone knows none of these guys are going to step into an octagon or anything else with Sam. Th these are basically excuses, right? These are the modern version of Zucker Nike's. Uh, well, I will only face you if you bring ten thousand people into the debate. Yeah, <laughs> right. And he said one million for me. Yeah, he said one million. Now, now notice he knows no no Christian's going to walk into a room with ten. Th How do you know? How do you know who's going to show up to a debate or not, right? You can invite a bunch of people and so on. But uh, notice his earlier debates. I, I look at those. There's like a couple hundred people in the entire audience. So he's yeah. he's the only debates he's ever done. There are a couple hundred people in the audience. And suddenly, yeah. when actual Christian debaters challenge him, then suddenly Zachary Nike says, no, 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 oh, only if you only if you show up with 10,000, which is ridiculous. I mean, Zachary Nike could, could debate someone yeah. sitting down at a table Tons of right. people, millions of people are going to watch it online, right? We're, we're in the internet yeah. age. He doesn't need that big crowd. So what is that? It's an excuse for not debating people, right? It's Precisely. an excuse, right? So and guys, so, oh, go ahead. No, someone, a Muslim just wondered, was I a former athlete? Again, I'm just telling you, pre-Christian days. And by the way, my brother, who's 54 years old, some of you have seen him in some of my videos. He lives with me. Thank God for him. Pray God bless him. And he <clears throat> surrenders to Christ completely. <clears throat> He's 54 He's a muscular behemoth. At 54, he spends two, three hours in the gym. He's about 260 pounds, massive muscle. I mean, he's got, he's got a little belly now because of COVID. But yeah, I come from a family of fighters and bodybuilders. In the 90s, I used to be in bodybuilding and kickboxing, and I got to about 220 pounds of muscle. But as you can tell, I let that go. Now, thank the Lord, I have lost 100 pounds. I want to lose that 50. I should have lost it sooner than later, but I'm hoping I'll get there and get just for health, not for fighting or looks, for my health. Because if God is pleased, I want to be around a lot longer to glorify him and see my daughters, you know, grow up to be godly women. But the Lord doesn't need me. So, yeah, LMC Muslim, I used to be an athlete. No more. The only time I lift anything is when I lift pizza slices and I try to get 20 repetitions per slice. That's the only time I lift anything. So just let you know. Uh, Somali Christian TV said, uh, God bless you. We love you. Hey, Somali Christian TV, go ahead and contact me. Yeah. Uh, I'd yeah, like yeah. to have you on. Saw you on, uh, saw you on Al Fadi's uh, channel the other day. So, um, Soldiers for Jesus. Yeah, set Soldiers it up. I'll get you, get you guys on. <laughs> Yeah. So just what Jesus, yeah. Someone was wondering also, yes, thank you for your concern. Uh, three weeks ago, my childhood buddy, I was going hiking with him. He got a bad <clears throat> dose of COVID-19. 
glory to Jesus, he's now recovering, he's at home, he's walking, but, you know, some think maybe I probably have it because of my throat, but guys, pray by the grace of God, I don't have it, if I do, his will be done, because again, I don't have the health insurance to take care of it, and I don't think I'm healthy enough that I would survive it, but God's will be done, but thank you for your concern. Uh, we do have an insightful comment from uh, Pedro Jr. who says, Chuck Norris is better than Bruce Lee. Yeah, 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 he knows. The guy's one of the uh, regulars who comes to my YouTube sessions, and he uh -huh. knows. He knows how to get under my skin. He's a good brother. He he knows to say that Chuck Norris is better than Bruce Lee is like saying that Muhammad is a messenger sent from Allah, and the Quran is a miracle. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, here's here's my position, Pedro. Uh, <laughs> Here we go again. We can't, we uh, can't. Okay. We can't actually say that Chuck Norris is better than Bruce Lee. The bottom line is we don't know how good Bruce Lee was because he never actually fought anyone. Uh, he fought one dude. It's behind closed doors and apparently couldn't even do anything with a guy who just knows Kung Fu. What would he do with an actual mixed martial artist like Chuck Norris? He, you know, f for all I know, he'd get smacked around, but it's possible that he had all these skills in secret. It's like, it's like Steven yeah. Seagal, right? Everyone says, oh, look at him in his movie, right? But yeah, he's choreographing those fights. And so you don't know what he, would actually happen if he was in a fight. You've never seen him in a fight. Same thing with yeah. Bruce Lee. Great choreographer. Crap movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome speed, yeah. but total, uh, you know, we just, we don't hey, know. Hey, we don't know. I mean, Steven Seagal calls out people to fight. No one takes him up on it. So that's what I mean. He's the real deal. Yeah. Uh, and, and you have Sam Shamoon here. For all I know, Sam, for all I know, Sam Shamoon is the greatest martial artist in the world, right? Never seen him fight, so I don't know. Same thing with Bruce Lee. But uh, Chuck Norris, we know, world champion fighter. Tons of fights. World champion. Yeah, tell me. yeah, yeah, yeah. Went, that's, went that's undefeated for movie. years, unlike Bruce yeah. Lee, who never had a real fight in his entire life. All right, Sam, back, okay. on to, the t back to our topic. Sure, let's go. <laughs> what, what is this? What, someone posted something? Uh, Tadarius said, David, what happened to Apologetics Empire? Tadarius, uh, I don't know if you've been checking my, uh, I just posted a video about that. So go to my, yeah, I don't know why you're asking about that here when I already posted a video about that last night. All right, now, Sam, we are talking about yes. Muhammad's <clears throat> night journey. Now, That's right. the, 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 this issue is important for multiple, multiple reasons. I want to point out one right here. On the issue of miracles, Yes. We often point out, and you can even find Muslim commentators who point out, that Muhammad could not perform what what we regard as miracles. They say his his miracle oh, is right. the Quran <clears throat> itself. So we point out, we say, yes, even though you have miracle claims about Muhammad from, you know, more than a century later, the Quran always assumes that Muhammad never performed miracles. And when we point that out, the Muslims reply to that and they say, no, 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 no. You do have, and they'll make a case for a couple of miracles. They'll say, well, you yes. know, it's it, you know, there it says the moon is cleft asunder. That refers to Muhammad splitting the moon. Whereas even Muslim commentators will grant that that sounds like something for the end time, for the end times or something like that. So uh, can't build a, a good case for that. And they'll point out, nope, you even have Muhammad's night <laughs> journey, right? That Muhammad oh, okay. was miraculously was miraculously taken to Jerusalem, and he got all this knowledge while he was there. And how is that possible? And that's in the Quran. So even according yeah. to the Quran, they will say that Muhammad performed yeah. miracles. Now, before we jump into the night journey, on sorry, that yeah. issue of miracles, give us give yeah. us an overview of, of the Quran, what the Quran has oh, to yeah. say about miracles. They're repeatedly, repeatedly, and as the Lord Jesus Christ anoints a session and gives us the health we need and keeps my throat strong and healthy by his Holy Spirit, <clears throat> In Jesus name repeatedly the Quran says no miracles were given to Muhammad I'll just mention two <clears throat> of the most obvious chapter 17 verse 59 of the Quran chapter 17 verse 59 chapter 29 verses 50 to 51 now why is 29 50 to 51 important because when he's challenged to do miracles the response is the Quran is a sufficient miracle you don't need anything else now this puts Muslims in a dilemma. Here's the dilemma. The Quran's response to the repeated challenge by unbelievers to Muhammad, give us a miracle. In fact, in one passage in chapter 28, verse 48, they even say, you're so unlike Moses. I, that's ironic because they say he's the prophet like Moses. But if you go to chapter 28, verse 48 of the Quran, chapter 28, verse 48, it says, why isn't he given 
a sign like Moses. So <clears throat> Muhammad's two excuses are, well, those generations before me saw the signs and they still didn't, still didn't believe. That was his first excuse. Now understand his lame excuse. Well, the people before me saw miracles and they still refused to believe. And the second excuse, 29, 50 to 51. 29, 50 to 51. Well, the Quran is a sufficient sign. It's a sufficient miracle. This Quran is sufficient in of itself to prove that Muhammad is a prophet. So the Muslims have a problem. If the Muslims are going to say that Muhammad did other miracles, that means the Quran is wrong. They falsify the Quran because the Quran wasn't sufficient enough. He needed additional miracles to corroborate the Quran. Are you sure you want to go that route, Muslims? That's the problem. Yeah, and so, I mean, really, there are so many issues just wrapped up in, with that. I mean, the Quran, over and over again, says, uh, makes excuses for why Muhammad couldn't perform miracles, but your average Muslim believes that Muhammad's walking around with water shooting out of his fingers, and he's splitting the moon, oh. everyone's all dazzled by his miracles, and the Quran is just making excuses for why he wasn't given miracles, whereas in, in any of these situations, when it's asked, and they ask, why has not a sign sent been sent down to him, and so on, the response should have been, what are you talking about? He's performing miracles left and right. Yeah. Uh, but that's not so. So that's so that's one issue, namely that Muhammad could not perform miracles. His only miracle is said to be the Quran, which has <clears> got to be the worst miracle in the history of humanity, except for some of Muhammad's other miracles, like yeah. you know the sheep talking, the the sheep talking to him to tell him it's poisoned and stuff like that. Too late, and yeah. you know he dies from it and stuff. So that you know. I gotta make a I gotta make a video like the worst miracles in history. <laughs> like one one would be the miracle of perfect preservation, right? <laughs> if that, if that's a miracle. It's the worst miracle in history. But then you've got uh, Muhammad's you, you know miracles when the Quran's denying that he performed the miracles. And then you got the miracle of the splitting of the the moon, which you know doesn't come about till much later. And in the Quran, you, you can't even make sense of it. And then the miracle of Muhammad being warned about the poisoned sheep after it poisoned him. Uh, so, yeah, some really, really lame miracles here. Yeah. But we do have these miracle accounts later on. And, and what's interesting is the Quran, according to the Quran, Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. And according to late, l later sources, Muhammad performed all these miracles. And so that just shows you how incredibly willing the early Muslims were to make things up about Muhammad. Right, because the, the the Muslims are going out and they're talking to Jews and Christians and saying, "Hey, you got to believe in our prophet." And the Jews and Christians are going, well, "What miracles did he perform?" And the Muslims are going, uh, "None. He he wrote this, you know, lovely Arabic uh, work yeah. that we have now. It's got lovely calligraphy in it, and you know, we sing this awesome song. Allah, right? They, we sing this awesome yeah. song, and 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 the Jews and Christians are like, "Are you serious?" We're talking about like splitting the Red Sea and and walking on water and raising the dead. And your guy comes with a Arabic text that sounds like the worst book ever written. Um, so then all of a sudden these these Muslims start coming back with, oh yeah, the uh, the ink's still dry on this page, but you know this this talks about a, a miracle Muhammad <laughs> performed two yeah. centuries ago. Yeah, you can believe us, trust us. Would would we lie to you? Of course you would, <laughs> right? So. Uh, so you, you've got that, that, that Muslims are falsifying their uh, their texts and lying about yeah. their prophet in order to support him because they had no real evidence for him. And it's just all it's just all these it's just all these problems in one. But Sam, there is there are some additional problems with when we focus on Muhammad's night journey. So why don't you just go ahead oh, yeah. and, and start out however you want. Tell us about Muhammad's night journey and then yes. and then we could go into some of the problems. Yeah, by, by the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, again, trusting his grace <clears throat> to do justice to this topic. I, again, rewatched. I rewatched, And guys, the reason why I'm mentioning it is because Yasser Gadi is gold. <laughs> yeah. And it's like this guy is heaven sent. It's like you would think maybe he's an undercover Christian <clears throat> pretending to be a Muslim to destroy Islam from within. Because if you go to his Sira classes... It's online for free. Check out Sira, C-E-E-R-A-H, Yasser Qadi, Sira, C-E-E-R-A-H, part 20. And he begins an introduction on the Miraj. Guys, I took some notes, some notes, and I just want to go through, because who better than Yasser Qadi to tell you the holes in this story? So if I say it, <clears throat> the Muslim is going to say, oh, you're a Christian, you're a kafir, and therefore you're going to lie about Islam. Well, 
I'm going to quote Yasser Kadi. The guys go. Thank you, Lord, hey, for hey, Yasser Kadi. Hey, hey, Sam. I mean, and 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 what about what about the combination of Yasser Kadi and Muhammad Hijab? I mean, that is the Batman and Robin of wrecking Is- of Woo. wrecking Islam right now, right? I mean, it's like it's like it's like Yasser Kadi is Batman and Muhammad Hijab is Robin and uh, is various claims of Islam are, are all the, you know, the, the villains, Two-Face and the Joker and the Riddler and the Penguin. And they're just going in there just wreaking havoc on the claims of Islam. And they're being cheered on by Muslims. Yes, yes. And they're just completely <clears throat> wrecking the foundations of Islamic belief. This is, this is awesome stuff. But you're saying that... Yasser Qadi has actually given Man. you some awesome information oh on this night journey. I've got to we hear. Can, I've got to hear this, friend. We can just play his video, and he'll destroy the night journey for us. We just sit back and listen. And by the way, just let you know who's making a comeback. I'm, I've been seeing him on our uh, comment section. Venom Fang X is back, David. Don't call it a comeback. He's been here for years. Um, That's right. He's here. Ma- now, hang on, hang on, hang on. Is it the, is it the original Venom Fang X? Because there's been a couple people who've gone by Venom Fang X. Is it the original? Well, yeah. Well, last time in my when he he's here, so when he was in my comment section, he said yes. Yeah. So I guess hey, Venom Fang X, if it's you, good to see you, brother. He's a Jewish believer in Jesus. Did some great stuff against Islam early on. <clears throat> You remember those videos? Oh yeah, I remember those. I want to remake some of those videos. I want to remake this, some of those videos uh, live action. Yeah. So he said it's him. It's hey Sam. Okay, guys, I'm going to just let Yasser Kadi speak. <clears throat> now, when you go to the video, go around the 11 minute 55 second mark. Go start listening to the 11 minute 55 second mark, and this is what he says. I'm I'm going to quote him in certain places and just give you the gist. Okay. He says, many problems. He says, man, this guy's gold. Many problems. He goes, first problem, he goes, from the earliest times, you had storytellers that would lie and embellish for money. Besides, and he says, so what happened was, early on, these storytellers added so much fanciful details to the mirage <clears throat> that they pretty much <clears throat> corrupted the story by <clears throat> adding embellishing and switching the facts. And he said it was around the second and third generation that this started happening. So then the Muslim scholars later had to come and clamp down on these storytellers and they'd even be thrown out of the mosques. And so now they had to sift from the authentic and inauthentic. That's the first problem. This is Yasser Qadi, folks. I'm not saying it. Second problem, this is even worse. He says, second problem is even bigger. It's even worse than the storytellers. He goes that this story of the Mirage is not found in one place. It's found in bits and pieces, and it's scattered all over. So that, he says, I was writing it down, he's saying that you can't find all the details in one place. They're like pieces of the puzzle. And so he goes on to say that nothing links them together in a proper chronological order. In other words, they're scattered everywhere. You can't follow a proper chronological order because it's mishmash. Mm -hmm. They're not found in a chronological order so that you can know this happened, then this happened, then this happened. And then I quote him. Look what he says. This guy's gold. Thank you, Lord, for Qadi. He says, Qadi states, in one sense, it is in fact really, to be honest, to be honest, it is impossible to absolutely verify the full chronological order of exactly what happened when. My goodness. Can I I repeat that one more time? It is impossible. Yasser Qadi says it's impossible to take this disparate hadiths, impossible to absolutely verify the full chronological order of exactly what happened when. Ah, but he goes further, David. He admits that the 20 Sahaba that authentically narrated, he goes, there were 20 companions of Muhammad that authentically narrated, look what he says. Oh, I love this guy, I wanna kiss him, but for COVID I can't. He says, the 20 Sahaba that authentically narrated sometimes contradicted what the other companion said, such as in the order of detail. Oh my goodness, gold, 20 companions of Muhammad repeating the mirage 
and they're contradicting each other in the order of detail. Oh, but this is even better. Because of the contradictions, folks, because of the contradictions, David, look what he says. He makes a shocking admission that because of the contradictions and their inability to reconcile them, there were scholars like Ennoawi, Ennoawi, that actually believed there were multiple Isra and Mirages, multiple, not one, because they could not reconcile the blatant contradictions within the different reports. So these Muslims gave up saying, you know what? Then it must have been multiple Isra Mirages, not one, because these contradictions are irreconcilable. Now, let me tell you why Ennoawi is an important figure. <clears throat> For you Muslims who don't know Anawi, Anawi is the renowned Sunni scholar that wrote a commentary on Sahih Muslim. He's got a comp like Ibn Hajar al Askilani has a commentary on Bukhari, and Noe has a commentary on Sahih Muslim. So this guy's no joke. He's not a clown. A couple more points, and then we'll go into the heart of the matter. <clears throat> Qadi states. Some companions believe the Isra occurred a year before the Hijra, whereas others said a, a, one, and a, one and a half to two years, and some even said five years before Muhammad's migration to Medina. So they're not mm -hmm. even sure about when it took place. They're not even sure. And then he goes on to say this, finally, <clears throat> finally, he says, no one knows what month it occurred. So there's a debate. Did it take place five years before the Hijrah? A year before the Hijrah? A year and a half before the Hijrah? Two years before the Hijrah? And he says, well, on the basis of an authentic report to Aisha, it says that the prayers, the five daily prayers, were made obligatory after Khadija died. Khadija died, and then the prayers were made obligatory. Now, people may not understand the significance of that. It was in the night journey that Muhammad got the five prayers. So he then deduces from that. If Khadija died before the five daily prayers were made far obligatory, then that means the night journey must have taken place a year before the Hijra, because that's when she died, about a year before the Hijra. But again, it's not explicit, it's an assumption. But again, let me repeat what he says. Let me repeat what he says. No one knows the month it took place. Wow, David. If I didn't tell you this was Yasser Qadi, you would think it's a Christian, right? Yeah, what, what's amazing, if you just made a video saying exactly what Qadi says, they call you a hater and a bigot and an Islamophobe who's attacking Islam without basis and foundation. Same thing Same thing if, you, if you'd said what Yasser Qadi said in his interview with Muhammad Hijab. If you started saying, man, this is no joke. There are holes in the narrative. The The... Yeah. The arguments that Muslim scholars use, the best of the scholars cannot stand up to the to the criticisms of Western scholars of the Quran. We're in trouble. If you'd said that, you, you'd, they'd have said, oh, what kind of bigot will say this stuff? But it's Yasser Qadi, man. So what are they what are they going to do here? I don't think he's going to last long as a Muslim scholar. I think there's going to be such a backlash <clears throat> that he'll, he's going to have to disappear because he's making too many candid admissions and the Muslims are starting to notice they already noticed, but now it's become widespread because he shook the internet <clears throat> all over the world by what he said about the Quran with Muhammad Hijab. And and, and we, we we've seen this many times before, where their scholars will say something and then uh, they'll just they'll, they won't they won't have the support. They can't go around speaking anymore because there are people who are always calling them out, and they just they disappear from public view. And so, uh, yeah, I think think he's going to have some problems here and, and right now for at least the next year he's going to be scrambling to win mm. back the favor of the muslims whose faith he's shaken but it's 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 too late <laughs> you know what i mean yep. the cat is out of the bag now the cat is out of the bag um yeah uh, all right uh two th two more things two things before we go on uh somali christian sure. tv said uh how can we contact you brother david uh i am I became one of your patrons a couple of days ago, Somali Christian TV. So you can you can contact me through your own Patreon. I'm 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 on the list there. 
and uh, join me live here when, whenever you guys are free and you'll get more patrons because yeah. people will like, I know the viewers here will like what you're doing. And uh, Amen. so there's that. And uh, is Rory Husky <laughs> here? Uh, I saw his super chats and he, I didn't see them because they were before, they were before we went live. He put some super chats in there, but some of those are pretty yeah. creepy. So Rory Husky, <clears throat> did, did you, did you leave? He said he was going to sleep. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Rory you know Husky. who he is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But are you? Okay, yeah, he's, okay. he's sending some disturbing, uh, disturbing, uh, disturbing mm. super chats before uh, the program. So, uh, hey, Rory, Rory yes. Husky, um, if you're going to sleep, if you're going to sleep, then then go to sleep, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow sometime. We'll talk on we'll talk on Skype. Um, yeah, so go ahead, go to sleep, chill out, and uh, send me a send me a time that works sometime you know after three or four in the afternoon tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, and we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk about, uh, the things that have been going on, uh, that you posted in the super chat. All right, Sam. So, yes. <clears throat> um, now what do you want to do here? You want to, uh, you want to yeah. go, you want to look, you want to check out what the Quran says. You want to check yes, out what the Hadith say. Yeah. Let's start with the Quran because they'll tell you, even the Asakati believes that there are two passages in the Quran or two sections in the Quran that make reference to the night journey. Mm -hmm. Now, just to give them a brief <clears throat> rundown of what the night journey is. Supposedly, Muhammad was taken from Mecca by night. In fact, it's interesting, I even wrote it down. He was taken on a beast called Burak. And according to the reports, and Yasir Qadi mentioned in the lecture, Burak is a beast that was smaller than a mule, bigger than a donkey, that was completely white. So this magical beast, <clears throat> smaller than a mule, bigger than a donkey that was magically white, accompanied by Gabriel. Dude, so according that sounds like us. <laughs> magical <laughs> beasts, bigger yeah, than a yeah, donkey, so. <laughs> white. Yeah, smaller than mules. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. That's that is, never that is that's your new nickname, dude. Triple B, the, one of the Bs is for Barack now. Yeah, Barack B, but hold on, friend. We're the worst of creatures, but this beast was... The best of creatures. What are you talking about? All right. So, I would, yeah, but anyway, with that said. By the way, so, by, 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 by the way, whenever anyone brings that up, I always picture, uh, I never I never watched the movie, but I remember from the uh, from the, the movie preview, there's a movie called The Never Ending, I think it was The Never Ending Story, where he flew around on this white uh, magic flying thing. Do you remember yeah. that? Do you remember that? Uh... Yeah, my daughters, yeah, my daughters watched that. Exactly. Yeah. But remember this, David, this Muslim to silence you. Bob Toon said, Yasser Qadi doesn't represent the whole Muslim world. Stop using him as reference. <laughs> it's, okay? it's just hilarious. When, whenever any of their guys speak the truth, they say he doesn't represent us. Guys, th there's, there's something called, there's something called the principle of embarrassment. We've talked about it repeatedly. Um, and it's along the same lines as what we just said, right? That the Quran admits over and over again that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. Now, why would historians look at those claims and take them seriously? Well, it was clearly embarrassing that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles because you could tell because they keep having to make excuses for why he couldn't perform miracles. So it was embarrassing to them. Allah keeps having to justify it. And so a historian would look at that and say, Wow, that, that tells us something about Muhammad and something about the claims of his time. But later, you know, sources from a century, two, three centuries later, the farther you get away from the time of Muhammad, the more miracles Muhammad somehow performed, right? So a historian looks at that and says, wait a minute, these guys are inventing stories left and right all the way down, you know, all the way, you know, centuries later that contradict their earliest source. So clearly we can't trust these guys, what they, what they say, because they're just saying positive things about him that helped their case in contradicting the earlier, more embarrassing uh, version of events. But it's the same thing with Muslim scholars in the world today. You've got Muslim scholars walking around telling Muslims, guys, the, there's only one Quran. It's been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. Perfectly preserved. There's only one Quran, only one Quran anywhere in the world, only one Quran anywhere in history. We know why they would say that. It gives Muslims a kind of false confidence in the Quran. But what happens when someone like Yasser Qadi comes out and says, I, I can't talk about this in public. We can't talk about the truth in public. It will destroy your faith, Muslims. It will destroy you. You can't even hear about it. You can't even hear about this stuff. It's secret. Shh, shh. You got to pay me money and come take my class if you even want to hear about this stuff. It's so, it's so horrible. We can't, we can't stand up 
to the criticisms of Western scholars. The Western scholars will crush our Quran and there's nothing we can do about it. We're like the emperor in the emperor's new clothes. We're walking around naked thinking we've got this case. We have nothing. We have nothing. So why would a Muslim scholar be saying all of this completely, totally embarrassing stuff if it weren't true? Right? The only explanation, see, there's an explanation for Muslim scholars saying the Quran's been perfectly preserved. It's deceit in order to in order to give Muslims a false confidence in the Quran. When Yasser Qadi is admitting all of this embarrassing stuff that will destroy the foundations of Islam, why would he be admitting that stuff unless it's just it's just true, right? There, there's no reason, right? So that's the general that's the general principle. It, 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 just let me give you an example. If someone were in court and they said, Sir, did you steal that watch from that store? And the guy said, no, I couldn't have been the one who stole the wa stole that watch. I was down selling crack to kids over at the schoolyard. Well, he might actually he might actually beat the, 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 the theft charge because people are going to be like, whoa, <laughs> he wouldn't have made up a story that's going to get him in more trouble in order to get himself out of that one. Right. So you look at those you look at those kinds of claims, those embarrassing claims, and you take them more seriously. So notice notice the complete reversal. You as a Muslim, you say, oh, these scholars over here are telling me comforting things that make me feel good about my book. Those are the guys I can trust. Up, oh, these scholars over here, Shabir Ali and Yasser Qadi, they're telling me that there are holes in the narrative and that there are different Qurans. Oh, they don't represent us. They don't represent us. Whereas we're sitting there looking at this going, we know the guys who are telling you perfect preservation are lying. These guys over here are starting to tell you the truth and you declare war on them as soon as they do. And that tells us something yep. about your religion. All right, back to you, Sam. Now, I had someone just said Muhammad was dreaming of a donkey, so that just brought up a song. I'm dreaming of a, a white, white donkey. donkey. That was guys, that was that was improv right there. We, we yeah, just right there, we see. just went right into that perfect harmony. You see how that works? Talented baby. Talented. It's the miracle. <laughs> I'm telling you. Now the passages that they're gonna to point to, it's going to do much more damage and destroy Muhammad's credibility. <clears throat> and expose the Quran as one of the greatest frauds foisted on mankind. The first verse we're gonna look at, and guys, I want you to pay attention. This is the passage that the Muslims appeal to to demonstrate the mirage. Now, there's Isra wa Miraj. Isra is the night word, night journey. So I want the non-Muslims to understand. Isra wa Miraj. Isra means the journey, okay? Miraj means to be taken up. To be elevated because the tradition says he went through he went through the seven heavens and then he reached the place where Allah dwells and he saw Allah as light we'll get to that a little bit later but according to the Muslims the Isra the journey by night is mentioned in chapter 17 verse 1 so if you want to open it up because this in itself yep. destroys Islam 17 verse 1 just that verse itself if you read it carefully, destroys Islam and shows Muhammad is a fraud. Here you go. If you read here, it carefully. Here you go. Quick comment here. Uh, Moses Steve Bradley says, David Wood, my name, my real name is Abdul Qadir. Thank you for leading me to the light. Seven years before, I remember the first time I heard you, I was completely shocked. You made me study the Hadith entirely. Now Glory notice, God. notice, you Muslims who are watching, wouldn't studying the Hadith lead you to deeper faith in Islam? All we ever hear from are people who read the Muslim sources and then leave Islam, right? What we what we hear over and over again are people who hear what we say and they think, ah, gosh, these guys are these guys are lying. I need to go study my sources so I can refute them. And then they go to their sources and they say, wow, these guys are totally right on the money, and we need so, to leave Islam now because they're totally right. So, uh, yep, good to hear from you. Good to hear from you, brother. And all right, you wanted seventeen one. Yep, this is the verse that destroys. Islam. Surprise. Watch. Surprise, David. <laughs> Surprise. All right, here we go. Let me get 17 -1 pulled up because I have the technology here. All right, and I have uh, I have a bunch of... Let me see if I can get it up on the screen. Remember, there's a billion on my end, too, so by the time it shows up on the YouTube... All right, so. there we go. I have uh, Pikthal, Yusuf Ali, Hilali Khan, Shakir, all up there. Yeah, just read, for now, read the Pictal. If you want, just read Pictal. All yeah. right. Yeah. Glorified be he who carries his servant by night from the inviolable, inviolable place of worship to the far distant place of worship, the neighborhood whereof we have blessed, 
that we might show him of our tokens. Lo, he, only he, is the hearer, the seer. Okay, guys, this passage forms the foundation for the story of the journey by night. <clears throat> but if you don't have recourse to the Hadiths, if you don't have recourse to the traditions, you will not be able to answer <clears throat> the following questions. Number one, it says, Glorif glorified be he who took his servant by night from, and I'll give the Arabic terms, from Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Haram, to Masjid al-Aqsa, so that we might show him some of our signs. <clears throat> and then it says, he is the hearer and the seer. So first question for the Muslims, and the Muslims are here. Muslims, please <clears throat> answer our challenges. Number one, who is the servant that was taken by night? Now you're going to say Muhammad. Prove it. And I'm going to show you why you need to prove it and not simply assert it. So number one, prove to me that servant is Muhammad. Number two, he was taken from Masjid al-Haram. Where in the world is Masjid al-Haram? The, the inviolable mosque. Where in the world is that located? And then he was taken to Masjid al-Aqsa, the furthest mosque. Where is Masjid al-Aqsa? Can you show me from the verse itself what Masjid al-Aqsa is, what Masjid al-Haram is, who the servant was, and what night was he taken on this journey? The reason why you Muslims have to answer from the Quran, <clears throat> why you must answer from the Quran, because here, let me give you some verses from the Quran. That's it. That That's exactly what I was, uh, <laughs> I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, I hope Sam points out that the Quran is supposed to be explained yes. in detail. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. So, guys, Muslims, here's why you have to answer. Or if you don't answer, you prove the Quran is a fraud, is a lie. Chapter 12, verse 111. <clears throat> there is in their stories, chapter 12, verse 111, there is in their stories instruction for men endued with understanding. It is not a tale invented, but a confirmation of what is between his hands before it. A detailed exposition of all things <clears throat> a detailed exposition of all things in case muslims don't hear it this quran is a detailed exposition of not some things of all things of everything and a guide and a mercy to any as such as believe now 6114 6114 say shall i seek for judge other than allah 6114 when he it is who has sent unto you the book, explain in detail. Explain in detail. Oh, wow. Hmm. They know full well to whom you have given the book that it has been sent down from thy Lord in truth. Never be then of those who doubt. Now, let me read one more. So you see, this is the repeated assertion of the Quran. 1689. <clears throat> 1689. One day we shall raise from all peoples a witness against them from amongst themselves. And we shall bring you, Muhammad, the supposedly Muhammad. Don't know. Let's assume it's Muhammad. We shall bring you a witness against these thy people. <clears throat> and we have sent down to thee, you, the book explaining all things. The book explaining all things. Now, David, again, I'm not the <clears throat> sharpest Tool in the shed. I keep saying that like a broken record. If the Quran keeps telling me this book explains everything in detail, detailed explanation of everything, should we expect to find chapter 17, verse 1, to give us all the details necessary to know who the servant is and what these mosques are and where they're located? Yeah, I mean, you know, we could we could give a little leeway when the Quran say, you know, claims to explain all things. Like we could say, okay, it doesn't mean everything in the world, but even yeah. Muslims are going to want to say, want to say that you know it explains all the, basically the the key elements of what they need to believe and what these things mean and so on. And so, if this is supposed to be a miracle and we can't figure out based on the text who it is, what happened, what this has to do with anything, and we can't it, we can't even make sense in. This is just one example. This happens over and over and over and over and over in, uh, in the Quran. It's a it's a massive problem for the standard, uh, what we might call the the argument from literary excellence. That the the Quran's main argument from it for itself is that it's so in, incredibly wonderfully written. Well, one of the one of the key elements 
of this claim that the Quran is unsurpassable is how amazingly clear it is. It's so incredibly shockingly clear that it could only come from Allah because no one could write a book that is that is this clear and that explains things in such detail. And yet passage after passage after passage we go to, they can't figure out what in the world it means. You have to go to, to commentaries and other books that come from centuries later to figure out what in the world this stuff means. And this is this is aside from all the other issues like, you know, commanding, you know, the calling for jihad and uh, beating women and things like that, where Muslims tell us, oh, that's not what he really means. I can tell you what he really meant in his perfectly clear Quran that he had all eternity to work on and get exactly the way he wanted it. Uh, I can tell you what he really means right off the top of my head. And so, it, it, you know, here again, it's look, this is the Muslim response. No, Muhammad did perform a miracle. Here it is. Doesn't tell us who it is, what happened, what he did, whether it's a miracle. Doesn't tell us anything about that. It's a uh, very, very strange to uh, to yeah. claim to make these claims about about Islam, my friends. Yeah, but gets worse for the Muslims, and I hope they're hearing us, David, and Surprise. take up on the channel. Surprise, David. Now let me show you another problem. I want you guys to follow the pronouns of 17 verse one. I'm going to read it now in Yusuf Ali. And you can read in Pictha, but because portents, you know, or tokens, I'm sorry. I want to go with something that says signs. Okay. 17, verse 1. <clears throat> Notice again. Pay attention to the pronouns. Glory to him who did take his servant for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the far farthest mosque, whose precincts we did bless in order that we might show him some of our signs show him <clears throat> guys don't forget that pronoun we're going to show him some of our signs for he is the one who heareth and seeth all things let me repeat it again let's see how many of you caught it so we can show him some of our signs our miracles for he is the one who heareth and seeth all things muslims you're in trouble you know why because it says the speaker, the plural we, says we want to show him our miracles, for he is the seer and knows all things. Who is that? <clears throat> if it's Allah, who is showing Allah miracles? It says we show him miracles. He is the seeing and the one who knows all things. If that's Allah, who is showing Allah miracles? Now, if you go back and say it's Muhammad, you just said Muhammad is omniscient and omnipresent because it says, show him our signs, for he is the seeing, the seer, and knows all things. So wait, if it's Muhammad, he's omniscient, <clears throat> omnipresent. If it's Allah, how can someone other than Allah show Allah miracles, David? Help me out here. Mm -hmm. What's the problem with that? Yeah, you got some wow. problems there. <laughs> so, you see just this verse itself, folks. Mm -hmm. Game over. Surprise, Muslims. Surprise, Asarkati. This verse is a nightmare. It actually destroys Islam, showing the Quran is incoherent, unintelligible, and it's not written in perfect Arabic, and it's not perfectly eloquent, because it fails to provide necessary details and it's written in such a way which either suggests Allah is one of many gods or Muhammad is divine and he's Allah's partner. Even the way it's written, glorified be he. David, I want to know, isn't this supposedly Allah speaking? Should Allah is supposed to be speaking, right? Mm -hmm. So Allah is now glorifying himself, worshiping himself. Guys, did you catch it? Allah is the one saying, Glorified be he. But wait, who's speaking? Allah. So Allah's saying, glorified be he, glorified be me. So Allah's worshiping himself? Oh. Well, he prays to himself, so why not? Oh, but see, remember, he can pray for as long as he's not. There you go. But you get the. Okay, guys, you see how many holes in one verse? Folks, that's one verse. You begin with Allah glorifying himself, glorified be he, but that's Allah supposedly speaking, who took his servant by night, but then it switches so that we may show him our signs. Wait, who's the we here? That's Allah. Who's the he there? That's Allah. 
So the we is Allah, the he is Allah, the he is the we, the we is the he, and they're trying to convince us this is not <laughs> incoherent Babel. Guys, you, you understand Sam's Sam's point here? So so this is so Allah is the speaker. It would, you, you can pick one there, but let's just stick with the pick doll there. Uh, glorified be he. So so we're talking a uh, third person here, third person singular. Glorified be he who carried his servant by night from the inviolable place of worship to the far distant place of worship, the neighborhood whereof we, so now first person plural, have blessed that we might show him of our tokens. Lo, he, now we're back to, to, first, to third person singular, he, only he, is the hearer, the seer. So it's just, uh, this is just hilarious, funny, right? It? Yeah. Yeah, and people actually believe this is a miracle. I we actually, this right there. Right. I have a, I have a uh, recording on way back when we posted on another channel's Yahya two thousand six channel. Yeah. Um, I had, I recorded a presentation at, uh, at uh, from Isna, where a Muslim scholar was trying to explain this constant switching between repetitions and so on. And uh, he's actually, oh, well, right here, when it says he, it's because Allah wants to emphasize this. And then when he switches to we, it's because he wants to emphasize this. And so uh, coming up with explanations even yeah. for uh, even for that. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah, let's just bear with me, folks, if you see me moving, because I'm trying to get some fluids from my throat so that by the grace of God, it doesn't give out. So bear with me. Yeah. So we saw the nightmare of 17 mm -hmm. verse one. Yeah. And the woes are just beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the problem, folks. Now, let's say we go to the Hadith literature. Uh-huh. The end of Islam. No matter what you do, you stick with the Quran, you destroy Islam. You go outside of the Quran, you go outside of the Quran and go to Hadith, you destroy Islam. Do you know why? Here's why. According to the narrations, and I have it, by the way, later on in the comment section, I'll put the links to these articles. <clears throat> Maybe David can pin it then. I have articles where I quote the Hadiths. I quote the commentators like Ibn Kathir and Ibn Ashaq, all of them. And they agree, they agree that this refers to Muhammad being taken from the Kaaba, the Kaaba to the temple in Jerusalem, the temple in Jerusalem. Can I just read one commentary by mm -hmm. Tafsir Ibn Kathir? Yeah, yeah. Okay, folks, this is Tafsir Ibn Kathir on chapter 17, verse 1. The truth is, is that the prophet was taken on a night journey when he was awake. Not in a dream, because there was even, by the way, there was even a de debate among Muslims. Did Muhammad see this in a dream? Because there are reports that say his body was still in his bed. Others say, no, it's a physical journey. So they, don't, they can't even agree. Was it a dream? No, it can't be a dream because, hey, what's so miraculous with him having these weird dreams? Mm -hmm. He was taken physically, and it was a vision. So even there... You got Muslims debating, but put that aside. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the truth is that the prophet was taken on the night journey when he was away, <clears throat> not in a dream. And he went from Mecca to Beit al maqdis Beit al maqdis but they say here it's Beit al maqdis writing an Al-Burak. Beit al maqdis for those of you who don't know Arabic, means the holy house, the house that is holy, the holy house. What house? Well... When he reached the door, Christians listen to this. He not only went to this holy house, he actually reached the door of the sanctuary. He tied up his animal by the door and entered where he prayed to Raqqa to greet the masjid. Now, continuing further in the <clears throat> commentary. Then he came back down to Beit al maqdis This is after he went through the seven heavens. Comes back down and the prophets came down with him. And he led them in prayer there when the time for prayer came. So all the prophets that he saw throughout the seven heavens, because Adi say each heaven that he went to, he saw a prophet. <clears throat> Until finally he met Moses in the seventh heaven. Now, they came down with him to Beit al maqdis to the holy house, <clears throat> and the prophets came down. So some claim that he led them in prayer in heaven, but the reports seem to say that was Beit al maqdis In some reports, it says that it happened when he first entered. So now notice the contradictions. Some say, no, he led them in prayer in heaven. No, he led them in prayer when he came down. No, he led them in prayer when he first got there and <clears throat> before he ascended. They're all over the place, folks, but here's where it gets gold. 
Then he came out of Beit al Maqdas. He was inside it. He came out of it and rode on Al Burak back to Mecca in the darkness of the night. As for his being presented with the vessels <clears throat> containing milk and honey, or milk and wine, or milk and water, <clears throat> or, or all of these, some reports say that this happened in Beit al Maqdas. Others say it happened in the heavens. It is possible that it happened in both places. Talk about confusion and contradiction. Yeah. But what's the point, folks? Folks, Christians, did you get it? Just like the Kaaba is an actual building, and he supposedly left from there, Beitul Maqdis, the house that is holy, Masjid al-Aqsa, the furthest mosque, is supposed to be the actual temple of Jerusalem. This is supposedly the temple in Jerusalem. Now, David, again, I failed history class, mm -hmm. and I don't know much about biblical geography, which I don't really. When it comes to geography of the Bible, I stink. But can you help me with the fact that isn't it true that the temple of Jerusalem, built by Solomon, was destroyed 586 B.C., mm -hmm. and the temple, the second temple, was destroyed by the Romans with Titus the general in 70 AD. So if I'm right, what temple did Muhammad enter in? What door of what temple did he open? And what door of what temple did he tie his beast to? When there was no temple, when Muhammad supposedly went to Jerusalem, and remember, <clears throat> Yasser Qadi says this may have taken place a year before he migrated to Medina. Well, he migrated to Demi Dem uh, Medina in what year? Wasn't that in 622? Mm -hmm. So in 621, let's say 620. In 620 AD, what temple was there in Jerusalem? Uh, I mean, if he's riding a magic donkey, um, maybe it was a magic temple. See? <laughs> gotcha. Maybe. Huh? Yeah, you, you, that's it, man. I'm stumped. I can't refute it. But I want everyone to understand the dilemma this poses for Muslims. <clears throat> you ask the Muslim, is Masjid al-Haram an actual building? They'll say, yeah, it's the Kaaba. So that means Masjid al-Aqsa must be an actual building because you can't redefine terms in the same verse, right? That's what they do with prayer, don't they, David, where <laughs> Allah and his angels praise? Oh, but prayer means this when it comes to the angels and means something else when it comes to Allah, right? <clears throat> yeah. Oh, hey, so, hey, hey, Sam, a little side note there <laughs> before I forget. There's that uh, There's that new Bridges, you know, that Bridges compilation of the 10 Kirat. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have that. It, it, it's, it's funny if you check out if you check out their commentary on 3356, right, where it says that uh, they they give the standard, you know, translation. Oh, what this really means is that uh, that Allah sends blessings or something like that. But they include a note. And if you look down at the note, it says literally prayers. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, David. So it says literally well, prayers. Mm -hmm. Now, just to go with this, uh, this Muslim did what I said here. Maybe you can bring up his comment. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh, with that said, look what this Muslim said. Uh, where is he, man? Man, I just had him too. Did I lose him? Darn it. He said, "No, it refers to the Temple Mount, David. Temple Mount." Now, I guess he didn't hear my argument. I'm going to repeat it again. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Muslim, I forgot, man. I just lost the comment. But here's what it is. Muslim, if Masjid al-Aqsa is the Temple Mount, not the Temple, but where the Temple stood. Then what is Masjid al-Haram? If Masjid al-Haram means the actual Kaaba building, on what grounds do you then say the same word Masjid does not mean the actual Temple building, but only the site of the Temple? Why do you do this to your Quran? Why do you play mincemeat with the Quran? And and but but apart from that, Sam, in, in the uh... In the hadiths and so on, when we and, and the commentaries, when we read about Muhammad's night journey, don't they talk about all these, you know, the buildings and the structures? I and just how, read and, it, yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. How, how how many, you know, the doors and the windows and stuff like that. So that, that's what I mean. It, it's if they're, if they're trying to deny this, if they're trying to deny it and say no, it just refers to the the Temple Mount, not to not to the buildings. Well, you guys have heard it. it the Muslim, what are you telling us? You're telling us that your, your own Muslim. Uh, Hadith collectors and so on ended up collecting a bunch of completely false stories again. 
So when they're inventing all these stories about Muhammad's miracles, we know they're lying. When they make up all these stories about uh, about Muhammad visiting these buildings, you Muslims are admitting that he's that they're, that they're yeah. lying, right? You Muslims are admitting that yeah. your later Muslims, in in their desperate attempts to defend their prophet, were making up stories about him doing these things and what he saw. Yeah. Well, guys, what you now keep in mind. Your sources like Bukhari and so on, they went through literally hundreds of thousands of narrations and stories about Muhammad to get to the best of the best of the best. If you're telling us that the best of the best of the best of your Hadith collections collections are filled with lies, then you're telling us it's just hopeless, right? You're telling us that these guys were the biggest bunch of liars that the world has ever seen. And, and guys, why has this been the case from the beginning, right? We look around yep. at your scholars today. Your scholars are all lying to you. And the moment any one of them starts admitting the truth, you pounce on him. How dare you tell us the truth? You don't represent us telling the truth like that. And no matter how far back we go, even to the time where they're putting these collections together, we find lie upon lie upon lie. What, what kind of religion does this, guys? What kind of religion says, yeah. all we're going to do for 14 centuries is pile up more lies until we have a population that can't bear to hear anything that's true without freaking out about it? What, what kind of religion does this? Is that, do you think the true religion needs to do that? Do you think the true religion needs to, be, needs to spend 14 centuries building up nothing but lies to defend yeah. itself? Yeah, so I was trying to pick up my phone. Someone's wondering what I was doing. I was picking up my phone. I had to do something. Well, that's right. my phone, I was trying to pick it up. Yeah. Well, sorry. What can I do? I'm trying to do everything I can for this <laughs> voice not to give up. Mm. Guys, well, pray let, for me, man. If my voice gives up, man, I won't be able to live stream for a while. Well, let, well, well, uh, let, let's go ahead and uh, uh, pause your talking there. I'll read uh, I'll read a couple comments here. Um, go ahead. You got to get some uh, cough drops, dude. Get some cough drops. Some no, well, I, I've been I've been doing um, salt water. I've been doing uh, chamomile tea and... Everything else, but camel milk. Camel meal. What <laughs> is that tea? Whatever they call it. Man. Camel. You said camel milk. Camel milk. Camel. And, camel and camel yeah, urine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gargling yeah, with camel so urine, to, because that's yeah. the that's Muhammad's miracle magic cure all. You, you get that and, and some flies in there and uh, some dates. That's the miracle she magic cure all. It it's a black seed. It's the miracle magic cure all to cure cure anything. And by the way, they included reason, coronavirus. The reason why I the reason why I don't want my voice to give up because tomorrow, God willing. Uh, 11 a.m. my time would be 12 1. 2 p.m. I'm doing a debate on Sokol Films with Yahya. He calls himself Islam Defender Yahya, the guy from Speaker's Corner. He actually was courageous enough to debate me. Does Quran teach Tawheed? <clears throat> Does the Bible teach a Trinity? I need my voice, guys. Ask the Lord Jesus in his mercy. He doesn't need me. I need, I need him. That my voice will be perfect tomorrow. Because if it gives up, oh well, no debate. So, but go ahead. And then you know everyone's gonna say you're running and you're scared. So uh, your voice better hold, hold out. So, uh, so yeah, drink some tea, get some uh, cough drops, and otherwise, otherwise I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna agree with them. I'm gonna say Sam is just scared of these dudes. All right. Faking of yeah. Okay. Hey, let me, let me so, give, what comments did you want to read? Let me give you a quick break here. So here's Lunchbox, uh, Muslim here in the chat. Launchbox. Uh, so apparently they were having a discussion of what the Quran says about the Bible. I'm guessing I didn't see the beginning of the of the discussion. Looks like he was. Uh, they were talking about that. And so Launchbox says, John Beavers, I think you should open your eyes about when Allah says, "Woe to those who write the scriptures with their own hands." Then they say this is from Allah to sell it for a small price. Uh, so oh, Surah 2, yeah. verse 79 of the Quran. Sam, do, do you recall just recently I made a video going through 26 reasons this can't possibly, I mean can't yeah. possibly, be referring to the corruption of the Bible? Boy, tw dude. Tw uh, 20, 26 reasons, right? And But the, anyway, the, the reason I wanted to bring this up and if someone could go ahead and uh, send that link for anyone who's actually uh, interested yeah. in this, that is, by the way, everyone, that is the go-to verse. If you ask people what the Quran says about the Bible, that is their go-to verse. You see, it talks about it talks about uh, those who write the book with their own hands. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because it really ties in. It really ties in with what we were talking about, with the Quran claiming to be clear and not being clear at all. Because if you actually read the context, before if you go before earlier in the same chapter, it talks about yeah. one one. This is only in context. This is only talking about Jews. There, there's there's not a word about Christians in the context here. This is talking about Jews. So it's certainly not talking about Christian scriptures, unless Allah is the absolute worst communicator in the world. 
Uh, two, you can go earlier in the same chapter, and it says that Allah says that he's affirming the scriptures that the Jews still have with them. You can go later in the same chapter, and Allah says that he's affirming the scriptures that the Jews still have with them. Uh, you can, In fact, you go just a few verses after Surah 2, verse 79, and Allah <clears throat> condemns any Jews who would pick and choose certain parts <laughs> of their Torah to believe in. In other words... Allah condemns Jews for doing exactly what Muslims say they're supposed to do, right? Muslims say, oh, you have to go through and pick the stuff that we agree with. And Allah says, how dare you try to pick and pick and choose what you're going to believe out of the Torah. So you've got all of that. And then you've got, uh, apart from that, you've got Muslim commentaries. And they say this refers to someone uh, writing something, writing something and claiming that it's a prophecy about, uh, about the prophet who would come. And they write a false description so that people would think that Muhammad is not this prophet. So you notice notice what, what the claim there is. According to Muslim commentaries, this doesn't refer to Jew Guys, do you have any idea what went into making a copy of the Torah? You're talking about a year's work of, for one guy sitting there for a year working on a copy of the Torah. And you guys are saying, oh, yep. And the Jews just all around the world corrupted them all at the, all at the same time. It's beyond ridiculous to think that, right? So according to Muslim commentators, this either this verse either refers to, to works that, that we think of like the Talmud, right? Jewish commentaries that they're passing off as having the same authority as the Torah. Or it refers to someone writing a false description of the prophet who was to come that would lead people off the track of Muhammad. In neither one of those cases would this have anything to do with the Torah itself being corrupted, let alone the scriptures of the Christians. And this is this is all just if we're looking at Surah 2. If we go outside of that, well, guess what? You have Surah 2, and then years later, Surah 5 is revealed, where Allah tells Muhammad that the Jews do not need Muhammad because they have the Torah. That makes no sense if they've got a corrupt book. Muhammad, in the associated hadith, tells the Jews to bring him a copy of the Torah, and he says, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. He's talking to a Torah that existed at his time, after Surah 2, verse 79. Now, he, anyway, here's the point. None of this has anything, can possibly have anything to do with the, the corruption of the gospel. Can't possibly have anything to do with that. But you ask, you ask Muslims, you ask Muslims about that. Hey, you've got this verse, Surah 2, verse 79. Jews are the only people in context. You go to Muslim commentaries on this, does this have, and according to Muslim commentators, does this have anything to do with the corruption of the Torah? They say absolutely not. Could it even possibly have something to do with the corruption of the Torah? If someone, instead of just writing something and claiming that this is a prophecy, if they if they had actually taken out a physical copy of the Torah and written something in there, would that corrupt the Torah globally? No, only if you believe in magic. How is that going to, to, going to corrupt a copy of the Torah in Alexandria or Rome? How's it going to copy... I mean, how's it going to corrupt the Torah around the world? You look at all of these issues, and then you have, even later, you have Muhammad and Allah affirming the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Torah. And again, none of this could possibly have anything to do with the gospel. The gospel is not even be talked about, being talked about here. And you ask Muslims, what is this verse saying? It's clearly and indisputably talking about the corruption of the entire Bible. What 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 about what about the Quran affirming the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Torah and the Gospel? What is it? That has nothing to do with anything. Surah two verse seventy nine, which can, which isn't saying this even according to our own commentators, even according to the passage, and even though if you go to the verse that says before it and after it that Allah is affirming their scriptures, not rejecting them, but this this thing that has uh, you know some guy wrote something down. This means that the Bible is universally corrupted. This is the point we wanted to get to. The Quran is hopelessly unclear, and it's it's such a terrible, horrible book that Muslims just twist it into whatever they want, right? Yeah. What what yeah. what does this verse say? What does this verse mean when you can uh, beat your wife into submission? Oh, it means tap them with a toothbrush. Well, why couldn't Allah say that? Why couldn't Allah say what you think it means, right? What does Allah mean when He says fight those who do not believe in Allah? Oh, He means fight people who are attacking you. Well, why couldn't He say that? Why couldn't He say it like you, right? Why are you so much more clear than your God and your Prophet, Muslims? Right? Why are you so much more clear? Why are you so much clearer than your God and your prophet? Your God constantly brags throughout the Quran about how amazingly, shockingly clear he is, and yet any random Muslim off the street can speak more clearly than Allah does, right? <clears throat> so you go to a verse like 279. The early Muslims did not think that this was saying anything about the Torah. Muhammad himself 
who is the walking Quran, the greatest interpreter of the Quran, Muhammad didn't believe that this had anything to do with the corruption of the Torah. He did not, he believed that the Torah was the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of Allah long after the revelation of Surah 2, verse 79. Suddenly, so Allah, according to you Muslims, is so hopelessly unclear, he even misled his own prophet with his lack of clarity. What do Muslims say today? Nope. It's clearly saying, it's clearly referring to the, the corruption of the entire Bible here, which Muhammad didn't believe, the early Muslim community didn't believe, none of them believed that, but we believe it today, and that's what it meant. So Allah is such a horrible communicator, even his own prophet didn't get the point, but we do, and we'll say it yeah. more clearly. We'll say it so, we'll, we'll say it perfectly clearly, the way Allah could say it if he, if he you know, were actually clear. And so this is this is what I meant, Sam. This is what we did a whole show on this. These guys are not Muslims, according to the Quran. More than one. They are not yeah, Muslims. More than one. These guys are not Muslims, according to the Quran. Sam, what what are the requirements for? I mean, how much do you need to submit to Allah and Muhammad, according yeah. to the Quran, yeah. that that these guys think they can just invent any interpretation of any text that they want? Do they fit the Do they fit the description of a Muslim? Chapter 4, verse 65. I'd also read 64 as well. But 465 says that <clears throat> you must perfectly, completely submit, not just externally, but even within your own heart, <clears throat> within your own <clears throat> inner person, with complete resolve, perfectly submit to all the decisions of Muhammad. doesn't say God, Allah. It says Muhammad. If you don't make him a judge and perfectly submit to every decision that Muhammad issues, then you're not truly Muslim. So here's what's ironic. Mm -hmm. Muslims will tell you that Islam is submission to Allah. Actually, in 465, Islam is more than that. You got to perfectly submit. Mm -hmm. Even your inner person, having no doubts or questioning, <clears throat> resolve it within yourself. Muhammad said it, that's it. I surrender and I will do it wholeheartedly, even if it means I have to kill, pillage, and rape, molest, and be killed for, for him. 465. And, uh, and, and related to that, we have from Shakir Muhammad, another perfect example. That was the, the guy. These are all tied together. Um, Shakir Muhammad said, Are the book you Christians have same as Injil, who was giving to Jesus, peace be upon him? So notice what he's saying. Well, is the book that you Christians have the same as the book that was given to Jesus? This is another perfect example of the Quran claiming to be perfectly clear when, according to you Muslims, it is completely, totally unclear and beyond insane in what it's saying, right? So the Muslims want to say that when the Quran talks about the Injil, it's only referring to a book given to Jesus. Guess what? There's no record anywhere of any book given to Jesus. We have that yeah. Christians have never had a book given to Jesus. So if that's what Allah means, then Allah is stupid, and your prophet was stupid yeah. as well. He didn't know what we're what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but th there's a bigger problem. Even if you want to say no, 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 there's this imaginary book that was, uh, you know, Jesus brought it and Jesus handed it to his followers. But then Christians lost it. The Apostle Paul came in and they all lost it. Problem. Muhammad affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the gospel that Christians still had in the seventh century. In the seventh century. He's talking to Christians in the seventh century saying that you're supposed to find him written in the gospel that you have. He refers to the text that Christians have in the seventh century as the gospel. Guess what? Do the math. That means that Christians had this in the first century, in the second century, in the third century, in the fourth century, in the fifth century, in the sixth century, and the seventh century. We know the book that Christians had in the seventh century. Because we have copies before that time and after that time. We know that it's what we call the Gospels today or the New Testament today. You know what you don't find anywhere ever? You never find some book that Christians had in the 7th century that is it was, was, was given to them by Jesus. Right? The only possible way, Muslims, the only way you can reconcile what the Quran says, that Jesus brought the Gospel, and that Christians had a book called the Gospel, the only way you can reconcile those claims and make any sense is the same way Christians use these terms. We say that Jesus brought the gospel because gospel refers to a, a proclamation. It refers to the good news. So Jesus came with the gospel. That's true. But when Christians have a book that's called the gospel, that either refers to the four gospels as a unit or the entire New Testament. So the only way to make sense of those claims in the Quran is to say that 
okay, Jesus brought the gospel and he was, that's a spoken message. But when it talks about a text that Christians had in the 7th century, that's talking about the New Testament or the four gospels. That's the only way you can make sense of those claims that will make the Quran look like it has any connection to reality whatsoever. If you're telling us that every time the Quran refers to the gospel, it means a book given by Jesus, you've just told us that your prophet's a false prophet. You've just declared he is a false prophet because he would be an idiot who had no clue what he's talking about. Christians in the seventh century did not have a book that was get, that was passed down from Jesus. They did not have that, right? So notice in every single case, in every single case, because this is what always happens. Every comment we look, we look at from Muslims ends up destroying Islam. And every comment we read from Muslims where they actually want to know something about the Quran and what the Quran is saying about the Bible, what the Quran is saying about Jesus, it turns out to prove that Allah is the worst communicator in all of history. And they're still telling us to believe in this guy, even though he says that he's the, the best communicator ever, mm -hmm. and he's the worst communicator ever. Do, do, do you see it? Notice, I, I, the reason I pulled up these, these particular comments is because, because they're all related. You're talking about this, uh, this verse about the night journey. We can't figure out what in the world it's saying. He can't even keep his pronouns straight, right? <laughs> yeah. Allah would be through. Allah would be absolutely through in today's environment where you can't you can't use the wrong pronoun about someone. You're, you'll, you'll be canceled. Allah would be canceled forever from all eternity for the way he can't even get pronouns about himself. Correct, right? But we can't figure out what in the world this is talking about. Then we look at what the Quran says about the gospel. We can't understand what it's talking about. We, we look at what the Quran says in, in Surah 2, verse 79. It, it, he's so hopeless. If he mean, if Allah meant what you said, he's the worst communicator in all of history. He did, it, it, even his own prophet didn't understand that. So no matter where we go, we find Muslims agreeing with us that Allah is the worst communicator in all of history. But he constantly brags about being the greatest communicator of all time. This means he's just false. The, the Quran cannot stand up. You can't say that, look, that Allah claims to, to be perfectly clear in his speech and... And in addition to that, he claims that all of this is fully explained within the Quran. And then no matter where we go, we find utter, complete confusion. And we find that any random Muslim walking down the street today can speak more clearly than Allah. Because the random Muslim walking down the street can say, oh, yep, the Bible's been corrupted. Allah couldn't say it. Allah couldn't figure out how to say it. He couldn't figure out how to say, the Bible has been corrupted. Allah could not put those words together, even though he was trying. He was trying really hard to say it, right, Muslims? He just couldn't get the message across. And Allah was trying to say... This is what I mean by the gospel, but he just couldn't say it. He, he ended up with complete confusion. And Allah was trying to say, yes, Muhammad had this miracle where I miraculously transported him physically, bodily, to the mosque in Jerusalem. The imaginary one. And he just can't say what he means. And so he needs all of you Muslims to come in there and rescue him. It's like you're telling us that, gosh, that Allah just had serious mental problems and just, you know, lost his... I mean, it, it's kind of... It's sad, but it's kind of like like Joe Biden. Joe Biden used to be really sharp and witty in debate and, and would, would break people down. He was a quick, sharp communicator. And now he's just kind of losing it. And that's what you're telling us about your God. You, you, that's, that, it's, that's exactly what you're telling us about your God. And it's so pathetic. <laughs> and then you've got people like Yasser Qadi, and he says, let me go ahead and get 1% of the truth the disastrous truth across to these guys and you all pounce on him and try to destroy him. What oh, yeah, is what over. is this religion, man? <clears throat> what is this religion? It's, a, it's over for Yasagari, but I think Allah was the original Alzheimer's, right? He had to be. So, something so something going on. It, I mean, whatever it is, it's 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 sad. But uh, anyway, Sam, I was trying to give your uh, yeah. I was trying to give your throat a, a rest. Oh, no, there, man, but I you're appreciate good. it, dude. I appreciate it. I hope it's get guys, like I said, Lord doesn't need me, I need him. And as mercy, I hope my voice stays healthy just so I can teach. That's it. That's all I want my voice for. Everything else, I'm sure David will agree with me. I need to shut up. But when it comes to teaching, that's when I want to hear yeah. my voice. So Matter of fact, work. that would that would actually be if you had like this miraculous voice that only worked when you were teaching. That'd and then great. other times your you know, your Woo. voice went out. That'd be cool. Man, that'd be fun. That would be great it's for me. I'd keep you out of keep you out of a lot of trouble talking trash to people. Man, I get further in life, buddy. But yeah, with that said, <clears throat> if you want to go into now the hadith where even the timing shows there's a contradiction of Bukhari. So we can do that if you want, because we already destroyed chapter 17, verse 1, just from the Quran itself. 
And then we showed there that Muhammad went to this imaginary temple. Mm -hmm. That's why the Muslims have to say, oh, it's the Temple Mount, David. But David, again, just so they don't miss the point. If in the verse it uses the same word twice, Masjid, Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Aqsa. And the first Masjid is an actual building. On what contextual basis are you going to argue that the second Masjid is not a building? Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, say... <laughs> Mehran Khan here says, "Why would you say that to our religion? Ma, you guys are you guys are missing the point. You're saying that about about your religion. Here's here's the great irony here. We, David Wood and Sam Shamoon, Sam Shamoon. Wait, which way here? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sam Shamoon and David Wood. Ironically, we actually have more respect for the communication ability of your God." and your prophet than you do. You treat your God and your prophet like they're complete bumbling idiots that need to be corrected every two seconds by your brilliance, right? That's how you treat them. In other words, you, 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 you go to us and you say, hey, Allah says right here, if your wife gets out of line, you uh, warn her, banish her to a separate bed and beat her. You ask me, what does that mean? I say, well, it means uh, that according to Allah, if your wife gets out of line, you warn her, banish her to a separate bed and beat her. And you go, no, let us tell you what it really means. It means you, you get this toothbrush. And you, what are you saying? You're saying Allah is just the worst communicator ever. We, we, ask, we, we say something simple. We say something simple. Allah says, fight those who do not believe in Allah. What's, you ask me, what's that mean? I go, fight those who do not believe in Allah? Notice, I'm showing respect that Allah can actually communicate the way he says he, he communicates. And you ask Muslims, what is what is that? What does he mean there? Oh, he means only fight people if they're coming in to attack you. Well, what are you telling us? You're telling us that you're a better communicator than him and that he can't he can't say what he actually means. We ask Muslims, can you show us where Allah ever talks about the corruption of the gospel? And you say, Oh yeah, right there in two seventy in, in Surah two verse seventy nine, which isn't talking about the gospel, which doesn't refer to the corruption of, of any of any authoritative text, and it's a it's in the context of a God who says that he revealed the Torah and the gospel, and who constantly says that no one can change his words. That's how he miraculously says that it's all been corrupted. He's, he, what you're telling us is that Allah constantly says the opposite of what he means. You guys are saying that Allah has some sort of miraculous cosmic Tourette syndrome where he keeps blurting out things that he has no intention of saying and he needs you guys to come along later and rescue him where whereas we're just saying here's what he says so i hope you get the point we have more <clears throat> respect for the communication ability of yeah, your god yeah. and your prophet now that's where the respect ends from us you guys yeah. claim that you respect him and then you just you reinterpret everything you don't like which is basically everything that he says and you don't realize what we're trying to tell you here, that according to the Quran, you are not Muslims. There is not, I have not seen anyone in the chat who would actually qualify as a Muslim according to the Quran, because you all, you all think you can believe whatever you want and you don't care at all about what your God and your prophet say. I can say your, your, your prophet says X and you'll say, oh, he's saying not X. It doesn't matter what they say. You just believe whatever you want and you are completely ruling yourselves out as Muslims. And then we tell you about it and you get mad at us. You get mad at us. You guys are the ones who apostatized. We're trying to help you. All right. <laughs> okay, Original now, now, Tourette's and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, as someone said. Now, what? Sam, did you want to check out 50... Did you want fifty anything from 53118 well, again? Or, uh, yeah, that, or, even that one, that one doesn't show anything about... Okay, Muhammad, so you want to, you want to go to the hadith? Yeah. yeah, the hadith is going to be now the destruct. Well, we've been destroying Islam from the beginning. Further, as if we, if Islam wasn't additional, additional destruction. Further, further destruction of Islam when you go to the hadith, because you remember when we began this, I said that Yasser Qadi, even my <clears throat> quoting Ibn Kathir showed it. Remember what Yasser Qadi said, guys. You owe it to yourself to go listen to that lecture, Sirah. Part 20, S-E-E-R-A-H, Part 20, you're going to hear him admit it's all over the place. The 20 Sahaba, companions of Muhammad that narrated, contradicted each other. We can't get a precise chronology because there's too many holes, which led some Muslim scholars to assume maybe there was more than one. Isra wa Miraj, that he did him on more than one occasion, and we don't know the month. He had to admit it. He was forced to admit it because of 
narrations like the one he's about to show you on the screen from Sahel Bukhari. We'll All right. Oh, so I, can, can see. I can pull this passage up right now. Here we go. All right. Watch here, man. Got up on the screen. Surprise. Surprise, Yasser Kani. Now, David, if you read it for them and let them know that the comments and parentheses are an addition. It's not near because I have the translation by Aisha Buley. That allusion to Ibn Hajar and Fath al-Bari, that's not in the Hadith. Could you read it and then maybe you can highlight why this is confusion? Now, this is a very long Hadith. I, I assume you're focusing on the beginning here. It just, yeah, yeah, go to the part when you get to <laughs> right after Fath al-Bari and right when that same, and then stop there because the Fath al-Bari part and the citation, that's not in the narration. Mm -hmm. Right uh, after divine, that's not there. All right, here we go. Sahih al-Bukhari, 75-17. Narrated Anas bin Malik. The night Allah's messenger was taken for a journey from the sacred mosque of Mecca, al Kaaba, mm -hmm. al-Masjid al-Haram, three persons, angels, came to him in a dream while he was sleeping in al-Masjid al-Haram before the divine revelation was revealed to him. Before the divine revelation was revealed to him. One of them, one of the angels said, which of them is he? They don't know which one, which one he is. The middle, second angel said, he is the best of them. The last, third angel said, three stooges here, the last said, yeah. <laughs> Take the best of them. Can you imagine going to yeah, yeah. Sam? Can you imagine yeah. to Sam? Yeah. To, can you imagine? Can you imagine this, Sam? Can you imagine yeah. seeing Muhammad sitting, sleeping around anyone, and saying, "Take the best of them," and you pick Muhammad? Yeah, you mean the best demon among them. Yeah, the I mean, most, I mean, come on. That evil. I mean, come on. Come on, come on. If I if I saw, uh, my goodness, if I saw Muhammad. Sleeping between Osama bin Laden and Joseph Stalin, and you said pick the best of them. I still couldn't pick Muhammad, right? So uh, the middle second angel said he is the best of them. The last third angel said take the best of them. Only that much happened on that night, and he did not see them till they came on another night, i.e., after the divine revelation was revealed to him. Fath al Bari. So Sam, are, are you saying that that part yes. there? That made that put this off to another distant time. Yes, is not 100%. in this hadith. It's 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 a uh, it's added from another source. Yes, in fact, even the Arabic speakers here who can read Arabic, here's the dishonesty of this particular translation of Bukhari. The translator inserted the words "ie" <clears throat> included example after the divine revelation was revealed to him because he's not getting it from the Arabic hadith. The Arabic's right there. Arab speakers, you can read it right there. He's getting it from the commentary on <clears throat> Bukhari by Ibn Hajar al Askanani, who's trying to make sense of the chronology. Because, guys, you understand the problem? If you read it as it is, this took place, the night journey took place before Muhammad was given revelation, before Muhammad <clears throat> became a prophet. And during the, that time, before prophethood, they appeared to him on more than one occasion and took him to the night journey. Now, I, I can't understand for the life of me. Why in the world would angels come to Muhammad and take him throughout the seven heavens, <clears throat> where then he sees Allah and he receives 50 prayers and he brings him down to five before he became a prophet? And by the way, David, you know who brought this out? So I don't want people to think we're making it up. Uh, is this is is this the Mufti? Did the Mufti bring this yes, up? Yes, Mufti I... Laith. He's got a series called Bukhari Gate. Mm -hmm. Guys, there's a Mufti. He goes by the name Mufti Laith. You got to go to his YouTube channel. The guy is gold. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Those of you who are, oh, those yeah. those of you who are watching the other night when I was on with uh, with Anthony, we we went through we went through his uh, his entire clip where he was talking about uh, Yasser Qadi. But yeah, everyone everyone loved him. And the reason why I hadn't noticed this before is because, silly me, I trusted the, that, that sentence, i.e., 
after the divine revelation yeah. was revealed to him? Silly yeah. me. I didn't I didn't think, okay, all right, because to me, all right, yeah, that makes no, and, sense. And Sam, you mentioned this the other day. We read this and we just we just we just gloss over that stuff, right? We don't it's it's programmed into our brains that Muslims know what they're talking about with this night journey, and then say, so, Oh, okay, then it was postponed, and then they came back later. Yeah, no problem. This isn't the sort of story where we're paying close attention to that stuff for, and yet it, it's all right there. This this is added to cover up what the beginning part is. Guys, I, I hope you understand what, what, what what's yep. going on here. Muslims Pilot have this story. Him. Muslims have this story about Muhammad's night journey. And they're not completely, they say they're not completely sure. This is what Sam was talking about earlier. Not completely sure about which month or uh, exactly when it was. But, uh, you know, a year before, you know, the, uh, the, they, a year before they moved to Medina, you know, two years, somewhere in there, who, who knows. But here you have, in Sahih al-Bukhari, saying that it was before Muhammad ever became a prophet. So his night journey is before Muhammad ever even became a prophet. And these angels come looking for him, and they find the best one and take him on this night journey. And what this means is, keep in mind, this is Sahih al-Bukhari. And they're having to, modern, you know, modern Muslims who are putting this out have to go to commentaries and things like that to try to fix what this hadith says, because this hadith shows that the story is completely incoherent right there's 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 no there, there's not enough of a core here that for us to treat this as reliable as a reliable story it looks like there's some story that's circulating and everyone is just inventing inventing it however they want and adding to it and changing it at all in any way they want and so this is this is what you're you're giving to us as proof that muhammad performed a miracle yeah so this is just nuts 100%. man this is nuts now just so people will see it's not in arabic i'm going to read aisha buley's translation unfortunately it's no longer on the website but you can find it on archive.org so if you guys find aisha buley's translation of sal bukhari she's much more accurate than muhammad muskan khan's bukhari she's much more accurate now someone is saying uh well doesn't it say it was another night i don't see your point well, let me repeat the point again. <clears throat> These encounters with the angels supposedly took place <clears throat> before Muhammad was given inspiration. Yes, it's talking about two separate nights. The one night where the three came and didn't and Muhammad didn't see them, but it says on another night, then he saw them by the eyes of faith. But the context of the hadith <clears throat> clearly indicates that these nights took place before revelation was given to him it's only the muslim spin and reinterpretation that says well no that other night is after he was given inspiration that's not what the narration says that's our point so what did muhammad muslim khan do in his translation he went to the commentary of ibn hajib who comes centuries later about 700 years if my memory doesn't fail me and he's explaining this problem, and he's saying, oh, that other night, that's after he became a prophet. But hold on, where does it say that in the Hadith? Where does the Hadith say, oh, the other time they showed up on another night, where then he saw them? That's after he became a prophet. You have to reinterpret it. You have to make it say that, because the plain contextual reading, this is taking place before he was given revelation. Oh, boy. So now, just in case people don't believe me, here is Aisha Buley's translation. <clears throat> this comes from the book of Tawheed, Kitab al Tawheed, the last book in Bukhari. Her numbering is 7079. 7079. Sharik ibn Abdullah <clears throat> related that he heard Anas ibn Malik say, say, on the night when the Messenger of Allah traveled from the mosque of the Kaaba. Three people came to him, notice, on the night when he traveled, okay. Three people came to him while he was sleeping in the Masjid al-Haram before he received the revelation. Now, David, I'm not, again, highly intelligent. It's saying on the night that he traveled from the mosque of the Kaaba, that's when these three angels came to him, right? Yeah. But it says this took place before revelation was given to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm really confused. Yeah. How in the world... Could this be on the night that he was taken from the Kaaba 
by these by Burak and Jibreel when three showed up, and I'm assuming one of them is Jibreel, when this took place before you received revelation. Now, let me continue. The first of them asked, which one of them is he? The middle one said, <clears throat> he's the best of them. The last of them said, take the best of them. Take the best of them. And notice, let me repeat the first part. On the night, on the night when the Messenger of Allah traveled from the mosque of the Kaaba, three people came to him while he was sleeping in Masjid Haram before he received revelation. So when did they take him? Notice, take the best of them. They're taking him that night before revelation was given to him. Now let's read the next part. On that night, he did not see them until they came to him on another night in which his heart saw while his eyes were asleep. Even here, it doesn't say on another night after the revelation. It doesn't even say that. And the plain contextual reading is the very night where he was taken from the mosque is the very night that these three angels showed up when the third angel said, take him, Take him where? Take him to buffet? Take him on the journey. And according to the Hadith, this took place before he was given revelation. Well, if he didn't receive revelation, he wasn't a prophet. How is that possible? Mm -hmm. How does that work? It's pretty strange. Yeah. Now, go ahead, go ahead, you make your point. Oh, yeah, I, I just wanted to point out how, how deceptive this is to... Insert so so guys we we hope you we hope you understand because I'm I'm seeing some comments here uh, some people who are wrestling with that a little bit so Sam just to be clear it says right here that these angels came to Muhammad for the night journey yes. before the divine revelation was revealed to him now just to be clear that's actually in Bukhari mm -hmm. but then when it goes on to say only that much happened on that night and he did not see them till they came on another night i.e after the divine revelation was revealed to him that's not there and that was no. ins that was inserted that was inserted um from fath al body when it's not yep. in there now if they were being at all if they were not trying to deceive isn't that something you put in brackets if you, 100%. You put that, guys, If you, you, can, you can insert commentaries and stuff there. You either put it down there as a footnote. You don't just insert it into the text like that unless you put it in brackets and clearly indicate that you're, you're inserting additional commentary here. Here, it just reads as part of the text. Like, this is what the Hadith says. That's out, that is outright fabrication and deception. What else should we expect from these guys? We just, we, we've been yeah. saying it. We've been saying it. You go back. You go back to the the original companions of Muhammad. They're lying left and right. They're burning manuscripts to cover these things up. You get to the times of the Hadith collectors. They're lying left and right. They're inventing all kinds of things. You get down to today. Perfect preservation, right down to the letter. Muhammad is the greatest man ever. He never hurt anyone. It's 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 nothing but a giant mountain of lies. And if you dare to point any of this out, Muslims say you're the liar. This is a man. What is this religion, man? What is this thing? What does it say? What does it say to you, Muslims, that your greatest scholars, who are supposed to be the most pious, remember, the more you know Islam, the more pious, the more you're like Allah's messenger. They have to do this to your religion, deceive, connive, twist, misinterpret the very accusations you make about Jews and Christians when it comes to the Bible. If your religion needs deceit, trickery, <clears throat> lies, deception falsehoods in order for it to be believed then that is a sure sign your religion is from the father of lies satan and you need to turn to the god of truth the god who said i am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me jesus christ your only hope of salvation what a disgusting religion because i'm even upset why am i upset i took for granted that bukhari was translating this accurate because it yeah, didn't we, dawn we, on me. We fell for, right? we fell for this yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, I, because it wouldn't <laughs> dawn on me that someone would do this to yeah. me. Honestly, I, you know, when, this is your source. When we're, 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 to, we're to the point, we've seen this so many times that we, we, we have to be suspicious of everything at this point because it's the only way we can even read their sources. They have so much deception in there. This is wild, wild stuff. Uh, here, there you go. Check this out. Yep. Uh, the Beastie Gamer 2050 says... Uh, I left Islam because of you, David and Nabil. Thanks. Um, uh, th there was a comment from Venom Fang as well. He said he sent me a message. And here's what's interesting. 
He said he sent me a message about a collaboration. I looked. Venom Fang, you can actually go to someone like Vocab. What you said in your email is exactly what I've been saying for like the last 18 months or so. Mm. Said so this is the project that I would have to do with Venom Fang. And I haven't heard from you in years. That's so well, I was tell I was telling Vocab, hey, there's one project that we need to get Venom Fang in. And the project that I said I wanted to do is exactly virtually word for word <laughs> what, you know you what, said, that means, right? what you said in your message there. <laughs> you know what that means, right? What's that? That's divine confirmation, believe it or not. You said it, he didn't know, and he said it. That's confirmation from the Lord Jesus, from the mouth of two or three witnesses, independently. This is what God wants you guys to do, seriously. So he even said, wow, David. He just commented, wow, David. Confirmation, Venom, this is from the Lord. He wants you guys to do it for the glory of Jesus. Hallelujah, man. All right. Now, we can we can wrap it up with one final thing, uh, the 50 prayers, and how Mo Moses turns out to be greater, <clears throat> better, more compassionate than Muhammad and Allah combined. And I have an article on this. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it in the comment section and then we can go to super chats if you want. But yeah, well, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll make, yeah, you'll make, you'll make this point. We'll do super chats and then we'll wrap up so that you yeah. can rest your voice for the evening. That's right. Now, <clears throat> here's the final point I want you guys to get. It's in the Hadith that we have, but it's very lengthy because it shows Muhammad going through seven heavens. The first heaven, Adam. Second ha heaven, John, Yahya, and Jesus, until he goes to the seventh heaven, he meets Moses, and then he gets to the boundary of the low tree, and Jabril, Gabriel Jibreel, alayhi salam, says, okay, I can't go any further, but you go. And he enters the house, and supposedly he sees Allah's light. Now, guys, pay attention. Please pay attention, because if you want laugh tonight, you want comedy, we already had the three stooges, the three angels who are the angelic version of the three stooges, thinking he's the best. Allah tells Muhammad, I ordain for you 50 prayers every day for your followers. Guys, pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. Allah says to Muhammad, I want you to go back and your followers must now pray 50 times a day. Now, before we move any further, David, is it humanly possible if you're going to have a job or you're going to have a family, or you're going to have children, and you got to pay bills. Would it be possible to pray 50 times a day? Uh, maybe if they were like super short prayers, but if they were like the full Islamic prayers, no, they'd have a problem with that. And I thought Allah's all-knowing, all-wise, and He's merciful and compassionate. Why would He put such a burden on Muhammad's followers? But ah, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. As Muhammad is going back down, he sees Moses on his way back. He had seen him on his way up. And you know, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna <clears throat> give you the gist of the conversation. It's there in the hadith. Hey Muhammad, what did your Lord say? He said, My Ummah has to pray 50 times a day. Moses says, That's too much. They're not gonna handle it. Go back and renegotiate. Decrease it. And then it says he looked to Gabriel, and Gabriel basically gave him the nod. Go ahead. And so Allah re reduced it to 45. Went back, Moses said, that's too much. Go back, reduce it. So he kept going back and forth, back and forth because of Moses. Brought it down to 40 and then 30. No, that's too much, Muhammad. Go back. He brought it down to five. By the way, side note, side note. Does that you say sound familiar? Did you say side note? <laughs> noit, yep, doink, 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 doink. But guys, does that story sound familiar? Doesn't that seem to be an aping, mm -hmm. although a convoluted one? That happens a of lot. Of Abraham and Jehovah God, when Jehovah God appeared on earth in human form, Yahweh, and where Abraham says, if there are 50 righteous in Sodom, will you destroy? Far be it from you. Sam, and then he reduces it. Pe people were even putting that in the chat before you said it, saying this, this sounds like Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Well, uh, is it ironic? This is in Jannah which makes Sodom and Gomorrah look like a monastery in comparison. But anyway, put that aside. Mm -hmm. Now, Muhammad brings it down to five. M Moses, guys, pay attention. Moses says, that's still too much because my ummah, my people, had a hard time praying three times a day. Go back, Muhammad. Have mercy on your ummah. Bring it down to three. And Muhammad said, no, I'm too embarrassed to go back to my Lord. 
I'm going to keep it at five, five it'll be. I'm not going to go back and bring it down less than five. And then Muhammad said, if you pray five times a day, you'll be giving the reward of 50 prayers. Each prayer equals 10. Folks, get ready for a shocker. <clears throat> Who showed more love, more compassion, more mercy, more pity for mankind, specifically Muhammad's ummah? Allah, who <clears throat> suggested or commanded, I should say, the insane command of praying 50 times a day, Muhammad, who did nothing to reduce it, or Moses, who was more concerned for the well-being of Muslims, <clears throat> Allah, Muhammad, or Moses? Moses. Moses was more merciful than Allah and Muhammad, cared for Muslims more than Allah and Muhammad, loved Muslims more than Allah and Muhammad, and had more pity upon them and knew, you're going to destroy these people. Irony, huh? When Muhammad is supposed to be a mercy unto mankind, and yet Moses not only outdoes Muhammad in mercy, he even is more merciful than Allah himself. He's more merciful than the merciful. Wow, Muhammad. And you want us to believe that you and your God are worthy of our obedience. There you go. A uh, quick comment here from uh, World Changer. What did Aisha say about this night journey? One Muslim here needs to hear what she said. And uh, I'm guessing that World Changer here is referring to Aisha saying that Muhammad never left, right? He yes. never left his spot. Yeah, he was in the bed. And yeah, Aisha also commented that because there was a debate, did he see his Lord? Lord Ibn Abbas said, yes, he said. Aisha said, you make the hair on my, you know, on my hands uh, stand up. He never saw his Lord. Mm -hmm. You cannot see. He saw Gabriel. So there was a debate. Aisha was debating because according to Muslims, when he went up, he saw his Lord, Allah. Aisha said, no, he never saw his Lord. He, him and his Lord never saw each other. He didn't see his Lord visibly. He saw Gabriel. That's whom he saw. So that was the debate among Aisha and people like Ibn Abbas. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's amazing is, how in the world would she know since it took place before she was born, apparently? <laughs> exactly. Right? I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's so, so precisely right. If you dated five years before the Hijrah, they don't. Oh, yeah. In fact, even before his prophethood. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so she didn't even exist. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, she yeah, didn't yeah. exist. And so uh, all you can say is, well, Muhammad told her about it uh, later, or she heard about it later, and the, the claim. Well, what of about Ibn Abbas? Ibn Abbas was Muhammad's first cousin. He heard it from Muhammad, too, and yet he said, yeah, he saw his Lord. Yep. So I think Muslim, I think you have to go with some sort of vision taking place, something like that. And then same thing with, you know, what counts as the Quran and what does it doesn't is the, the early Muslims are just in a state of hopeless confusion. Exactly. As are Muslims today. But th that's that. exactly Yasser Qadi's point. Mm -hmm. His point is they're so full of contradictions that you cannot piece them together and get a precise chronology. And because they're full of contradictions and people are confused, it led some Muslims like Nawawi to assume maybe it was more than one night journey and ascent. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, this is, <laughs> you know, it's funny as the Muslims in the chat are still whining and attacking us. I mean, guys, you should be horrified. You Muslims should be horrified. Wait a minute. I've been told all my life that Muhammad went on this uh, mir miraculous night journey and and uh, and it's it's a miracle of the Quran and proof of his prophethood. And now I find out that even according to my own sources and my own scholars, it's a hopeless mess and no one can make any yeah. sense of it. We can't figure out when it was before prophet or after a prophet. And even if you take it seriously, Moses turns out to be greater than Muhammad. Ah, oh. I need to leave Islam. How do you not how do you not realize that? And to make it worse for them too, did you know what Aisha said to anyone who said that Muhammad saw his Lord? Let me read it. Sahih Bukhari, volume 9, number 477. Old numbering. Sahih Bukhari, volume 9, number 477. Aisha said, if anyone tells you that Muhammad has seen his Lord, he is a liar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For Allah says, no vision can grasp him. He is a liar. And if anyone tells you that Muhammad has seen the unseen, he is a liar. For Allah says, none has the knowledge of the unseen but Allah. But wait, the same hadith say, Ibn Abbas said, Muhammad saw his Lord, saw him. So Aisha just said, Ibn Abbas, you are a dirty liar, Ibn Abbas. 
There you go. Um, here's what's uh, here's here's what's funny, Sam. We talk about Muhammad and Aisha. Why, in the name of common sense, did a man who's over 50 years old have to climb on top of a prepubescent <laughs> nine-year-old girl? Why, why, why? And the Muslims say, because Muhammad could tell that that little girl was going to be great, was going to be great at preserving information about him and that she would really get all of this stuff and she would be this this wealth of information about Muhammad. And then we quote Aisha to these same Muslims to tell us about history. And they say, oh, you can't trust her. What does she know? She's too young. <laughs> what an amazing, it's amazing stuff, man. What a, wow. What a, what a religion, man. All right. Let's check out some uh, super, uh, super chats and super stickers. We got uh, Karen Fisher with the, uh, with the super sticker. Barack O'Niner has posted several, but he says, uh, Kafir's prophet angel Gabriel prophesied in oh yeah in Galatians one eight so <laughs> he, he calls us Kafirs and says that prophet angel Gabriel was prophesied in in, in Galatians one eight. But if we are an angel from heaven, should preach a gospel other than the one you have received, let him be eternally condemned. Yep, you're right. Then we have uh, Anaris and Hindu historian uh, with the super stickers. We have Eric Brown who said Muhammad here. He's got you here, Sam. Muhammad had a time-traveling horse. He went back in time to Jerusalem and met Solomon's wife in Song of Solomon. Their problem <laughs> solved. So there, Eric you Brown solved multiple problems all at once. Uh, oh, boy. Coco yeah. JC for oh, he said, uh, you guys are great. I agree with that one. Ray Jake said, a toothbrush miswak beating is very painful. I mean, it kind of, you know, it would kind of... It would kind of depend. I mean, I've had a, you know, I've used muswaks before just to, you know, see how they work and stuff like that. Um, and, well, I use them for Islamicize me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of depends. I mean, if you have a little one like this that you use for your teeth and you, you tap, you could you could hurt you could hurt someone with that. The, the point is, if, if that's what Allah means, he needs to be more clear about that because the actual historical background that we have on the revelation of Surah 4, verse 34 is that a man slapped his wife in her face and that's when Allah gave, said that yeah you can do that there's there, you can't have any retaliation for that sort of thing and then we read in the Muslim sources that men could beat their wives until their skin turned green and so I mean you know you'd have to you could do that with a toothbrush I mean it, it's funny because I mean if you really wanted to go with that you could just get like the world's biggest toothbrush right you could get the world's biggest muswak right and uh and really be uh you know before you read another comment, mm -hmm. the guy we just quoted Bukhari, he said, Sam, that hadith about 50 prayers is fake. That's Sail Bukhari. He just called Bukhari fake. Yeah. This is the beauty about this religion. Yeah, so <laughs> uh. <laughs> any source we quote that they don't like, uh, we're making it up, we're lying. See, and that that's what's funny. I have no problem I have no problem with Muslims saying, uh, Ibn Asak is filled with lies. Sahih al Bukhari is filled with lies. Sahih Muslims filled with lies. It's all lies, that's all lies. Great, then don't tell us about your prophet anymore. Stop yep. telling us about your prophet. You don't know anything about him. Oh, but we know the Quran. You don't know anything about the Quran. You can't understand the Quran. And you can't tell us about how it's formed, who it's revealed to. You can't tell us any of that because the, the sources that you would rely on to give you that information, you're the ones telling us, are full, they're full of lies. So you get, they, they don't realize. These guys do not realize how much they are destroying their religion. But it is, it is fun to watch. Um, Truth Seeker retracted his message. I don't know what that was. Uh, Mira Suzy said, Quran is perfect miracle explained in detail. Very clear, miraculous book explains itself fully. And then a bunch of laughing faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what uh, it is, folks. Ray Jake says, yes, the animal from the never ending story. Matter of fact, that that's, that's a, uh, that's exactly how I would like, I, I should probably make a, uh, a video about this, right? Just read one of the passages on the night journey about this uh, this amazing animal and just put a bunch of clips from the never ending story of this kid riding it and uh, riding that, uh, that flying animal, monster, whatever it was. Uh, Nicola Siditu says, uh, love you guys. Mahir T said, I translated this on Google. <laughs> he, he inserted, he inserted, 
3356 of the Quran, he just inserted the text into Google Translate and it said, Allah and his angels pray to the prophet. We have to Beautiful, try we have to, we have to try that. There it's there, there he's going against uh hijab and, and even us. We only say four or sends prayers upon or something like that. Beautiful. Um, but Same. yeah, yeah, guys, you have it's just it's just it, it, it it's the truth is coming out of out of anywhere. You can walk up to any Muslim on the planet and say, "Hey, what does salam mean?" They know what that means. They know what that means. And now you've got the the bridges ten ten kirat edition of the Quran, and they give this alternative translation. But they said literally it means prayers. And then I've got I've got dictionaries of Quranic Arabic, and they say, well, when it's used of Allah, it really means that He sends blessings. Uh, but it comes, yeah, the word just means prayer, right? So they're all, and then you have, of course, Muhammad hijab. When I say, Allah prays for Muhammad, he goes, ha, huh, I'll school you on Arabic. It's not to Muhammad, which I never said. It's for Muhammad. So he agrees, he agrees with me. So over and over again, they, my goodness. It's like the entire Muslim community is saying, yes, Allah prays for Muhammad. But if you say it, you're a liar and we're going to call you a liar. It's, I, I can't figure out what this religion is, man. It's, uh, it's interesting stuff. Um, <sighs> all right, we have a uh, Hebrew name here. He says, Muhammad, peace contradicted with him, failed to prove his prophethood. <laughs> he certainly did. Uh, uh, no no proofs here. Animal said, you can see the holes in the Quran when you see the crescent moon, Islamic symbol. <laughs> Pray for Muslims <laughs> to be able to be honest about Muhammad. Yeah, Mira Suzy says, let us, as part of the body of Christ, pray for the health of these two brothers in Christ. Amen. So that's uh, that's about yeah. us. Caleb Lewis uh, didn't leave a comment. Tatiana J. Uh, Sam. You. Yeah, uh, she's my Syrian sister. She's yeah, she Syrian. said. Sam. Sh Cheryl says you don't need to. Do, you don't need insurance. Just see a doctor. All right, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hopefully, I won't need to, but we'll see because yeah. I don't want COVID to lay me out. God forbid. Uh, Hindu historian says, "Do you have any tips for presenting scholarly information, like an article enumerating commentaries?" on a passage in a video without sounding too boring. Well, fortunately, Hindu historian, a lot of the stuff that you'd want to give commentaries on is usually some, it's usually kind of exciting in the sense of how much damage it does. So if you're presenting some some brutal criticisms of Islam and you're going to some commentaries, uh, you should be you should be good with that. And by the way, Hindu, Hindu historian, um, there needs to be a, I don't know. Are they? Are there? Are there any prominent uh, like internet, like YouTube, Hindu critics of Islam? There, there might be some who are speaking, uh, you know, languages from India. But I'm wondering, is there like someone speaking English? You aware yeah. of any, Sam? No, no. Prominent I, Hindu I, critic. No, I got a book written by a Hindu criticizing Islam. It was pretty ex excellent, but that was years ago. But not nothing on YouTube. Yeah, Hindu Hindu historian. Um, yeah, I don't know what you're. If you're talking about making videos and stuff like that, then uh, yeah, the the field is wide open for uh, the Hindu perspective on Islam because they have a lot of interactions that a lot of us in the United States have not had uh, in India. They've been dealing with Islam for for a long time. Uh, Ready made didn't leave a comment. Raf uh, says before you wreck Islam again. Just wondering what are your thoughts on the true for Khan. That's a good question for you, Sam. Yeah. The true for Khan. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, those who have actually examined it from the Arabic linguistic perspective, they say it is amazing. It mimics the Quran perfectly. In fact, in many places, it's superior to the Quran in its Arabic structure and eloquence. Now, the problem is getting Muslims to admit that. Yeah. Get Muslims to admit that. That's the miracle. So, yeah, uh, there's Arabic people who are scholars of the Arabic language, and they will say mm -hmm. <clears throat> 77 chapters, perfect Arabic, perfect structure, perfectly eloquent, amazing, but hasn't really left much of a dent. Yeah. Um, in, in case everyone in case anyone's wondering what we're talking about, um, the, the Quran, the main argument of the Quran is that it, it's so amazing that no one could produce even a chapter like it. Well, uh, back in the day, someone wrote an entire book that's written in the style of the Quran, but it's uh, it's definitely not an Islamic message. And so uh, what, what's what's funny is uh, I, I've he I've heard I've heard from people who in a in a Muslim country on a bus ride will get up on the bus and start reading mm -hmm. from the true for Khan. And Muslims are getting off the bus and going, thank you for reading from the Quran to us on this bus ride and stuff. They, th they think it's the Quran. They can't tell the difference. 
Much like, much like Muhammad could not tell the difference between, between a revelation from God and a revelation from yeah. Satan, Muslims exactly. cannot tell the difference between the Quran and the true Furqan, which again, the true Furqan is, is written to show that you can write something like the Quran. So problems upon problems upon problems. Uh, Mira Susi says, greetings to you both in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May you be healthy. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Ad hominem God. attack says, like Santa, Jesus can be any color you want him to be. Yeah, it, it's never been it's never been a concern of Christians, right? I mean, you, that's what's amazing. You go to the Muslim sources and they're constantly talking about, oh, Muhammad was so white. Oh, the whiteness of his arms. Oh, the whiteness of his legs. Oh, the whiteness of his shins. Oh, the whiteness of his stomach. Oh, the whiteness of his armpits. Oh, so white, so white, so white, so white, so white. The gospel writers don't seem to care at all, right? It's just exactly. not, it's not an issue for them. <clears throat> By the way, David, just you, if you guys want to know that true for Khan is powerful, when a Muslim attacks it, you know, it's great because ya, 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 ya said, true for Khan is an evil book. What better endorsement? When a Muslim says something's evil, you know it's great, it's phenomenal, it's out of this world. Thank you, Yahya, yeah, yeah, for now convincing us True for Khan is amazing. It's destroying the Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, solitary Emmy. And by the way, guys, it's it's a book that you can actually get. You can get it you get online, but you can also just have it as a book. I, I have it around here. I have it around here somewhere. Uh, solitary Emmy um, with the super sticker and cricket two uh, 2217 says, thank you, Mr. Wood. May Allah, <laughs> may, may God bless oh. you and your family. Um, I thought about saying something funny. <laughs> um, let's see. We just have a couple, we have a couple more before we, uh, before we take off. Uh, Penta Krushtal said, in his night journey, Muhammad foresaw himself flying the rug in Disney's Aladdin. That, that, that's, <laughs> the, that's the other movie that would actually fit in for, for, uh, for a video on this topic. Marilyn Murphy says, every time you guys start picking apart Islam and Muhammad, I hear Phil Collins in my head singing Land of Confusion for some strange reason. <laughs> yeah. Emmanuel Shaheed says, typical, uh, what? But this guy, just, you got you to gotta endorse his brother. Former Muslim, became a oneness, who now is a Trinitarian, diehard Trinitarian, loves Jesus, and he just started a YouTube channel refuting Islam. Who's Emmanuel that? Shaheed. Emmanuel Shahid, the guy right now that you just mentioned, the, oh, the yeah? super chat. Yeah, Emmanuel Shahid. So Emmanuel Shahid said, Muslims always want to argue another religion, but they can't defend their own. Story of my life, smack in my head. I was once uh, one of them, and I, I laugh at this. And, and yeah, I mean, Sam, I mean, <laughs> the, pa the pattern is, is simultaneously sad and heartbreaking while also being hilarious. We say, yeah. guys, we're going to talk about Jehovah's Witnesses. And they can't stop getting us to talk about Muhammad. We say we're yeah. going to talk about Muhammad's night journey. And they want to talk about anything other than the night journey. No matter what the topic is, they come here to distract and divert. Even if what they're diverting us to means that we'll be attacking uh, Islam and the Quran and Muhammad. And it, it's it's amazing. It's like, what what is this, right? It's like it's like we, we, have, we have one purpose in life to distract anyone from what they want to talk about and make you destroy Islam. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is really love amazing. It. The real miracle is people think it's a miracle. May the Lord Jesus save them, man. What a pathetically uh, irrational, illogical, incoherent book of babble and immorality. Wow. It's got some problems. Uh, Loris K. Psalms 25 says, uh, Hi, David. Do you think you'll still have the Apologetics Conference in Southern California in September with COVID? Oh, I think she's referring to the... Um, September 11th. Yeah, the, the, uh, one, the, the Strong Tower Conference. As far as I know, that's yeah. still on, but y you just can't know because I was uh, I was doing a an apologetics conference with uh, with uh, uh, Frank Turek and uh, Jay Warner Wallace and a bunch of other guys, and that just got it, the things don't get canceled; they get postponed. So there was the uh, the CIA um, conference, Cross Examine Instructors Academy conference, that was early in supposed to be early august and that just got they asked us if they could could push it back to december or mm -hmm. january it's funny i said look i don't i don't work on january the 8th because that's elvis's birthday but i said yeah. I, I said i can make it i can make an exception i said i'll make an exception uh, hey, by the way uh, dave just let you know the way it's going they're waiting for a second wave for the second wave so they're probably going to keep us shut down for a long that's true. time buddy and really i mean you know, guys, you, you get you got to look at the bright side. You got to look at the bright side that, hey, if, if people are stuck at home, then 
great. This is a great time to study. It's a great time to learn some apologetics, great time to share apologetics. And we're starting up the uh, apologetics empire and translating mm -hmm. videos and sending them around the world. And, you know, it, uh, it's going to suck. People are going to have a rough time with a lot of the things that are going on in the world. But got to make the best of it. And uh, I believe good, awesome things can come out of all of this. Oh, Fetter Fencer says, would you guys do a live stream about some Old Testament apologetics like Elisha and the Bears story? I'll and, do that. And Sam. Yeah, just, if, you, Sam yeah, if you want me to do it for you, I will. But I'll do it for my channel because I just, when I saw it, I said, yeah, I got to address this. Mm -hmm. Where the, the Bears mauled young boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. And Sam, thanks for your Trinity discussion stream yesterday. So I'll All do right, yeah, I'll take and then Carol and Karen with the uh, <laughs> got a unicorn from from Carol. <laughs> By the way, Venom said, "Can he have a private conversation with you when you're done?" Um, Venom, he just ask you that. What time is it? Yeah, we'll ha we'll have to be quick because uh, I'm actually in my room and my wife will have to be going to sleep. But uh, yeah, we'll 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 make it quick. But that that should be quick as far as uh, us ironing out a, a plan real quick. So yeah, I, I have your email that you just sent. I'll flip you right back uh, my Skype name and we can uh, we can check that out. All right. I guess. We all... Uh... Yep. If that's it, just let me ask you guys. Guys, like I said, I mean this. The Lord doesn't need me. I need him. So if the Lord is pleased, ask the Lord to heal my throat that by morning I'll be fully recovered for the debate. If not, I don't want to postpone it. I really want to. Because unlike other Muslims, Yahya has a very gentle, uh, compassionate side to him. That's why I'm shocked he's a Muslim. His Wait, wife is Catholic. Wh yeah. Which which Yahya is this? Yahya Seymour? Yeah, uh, no, no, not that Yahya. No. Which Yahya? That's yeah. He's the one who's on goes to Speaker's Corner, who's debated Hatun Tash. He just debated her a couple of days ago. Oh yeah. Hatun okay. Tash. He's an older guy. He's got a like a white beard. Really sweet guy. Sweet okay. guy. And that's why I'm shocked he's still a Muslim because people that sweet can't be Muslims. So pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for David. Of course you pray can. I've met all sorts well, of I've met all sorts of sweet yeah. Muslims, man. That's in spite well, of the religion, yeah, man. Yeah, that's, that's true. What I'm you, are, saying. you are correct. In there. spite of the religion. If you follow Muhammad, you know how you turn out. Now, guys, I just want to say this. Pray for him, David. Pray for his wife and kids. God bless them. Give them perfect health, provision, and give him many more years to destroy Islam until Jesus comes. Pray for my daughters and me that the Lord Jesus will bless us and pray. God wants me to glorify him, to heal my ailments, especially my voice, to use it for his glory. As you can see, it's about to give up. Uh, and finally, uh, Priya says, uh, best wishes to David and Sam. And the Beastie Gamer 2050 says, his hijab was rude to you, doesn't even know Hebrew. Well, he definitely doesn't know Hebrew. As far as the rudeness, I don't really care. What what I do care about is... Okay. He's that... schooled you on Hebrew. Elijah means yeah. God with us, you yeah. little sinner. Yeah. What? Uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the lies... In, in, in you know making stuff up in the debate you just come to expect that from from guys like him and uh you know insults i don't, I don't have a problem the, pro the 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 problem i had was that i was required by the muslims that we all agree that we're not going to go off topic we're going to be friendly and there will be no personal attacks and that everything we agree to he violates the entire time everything i'm required to agree to ahead of time they violate it the entire time but notice that ties together with everything we've been saying. You go back to the, the 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 companions of Muhammad. What is it? Lie, 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 lie. You go back to when their sources are being compiled. Lie, 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 lie. You get down to today. What is it? Lie, 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 lie. It's just it, it's it's a religion of endless lies, and they tell us that hey, Islam is lie upon lie upon lie upon lie upon lie. Everything you can see and verify about it turns out to be a lie, but believe it because it's the truth, and that, my friends is the definition of insanity. Sorry. Catch you all later. Now, well, oh, good. Okay. No, I was going to say, I think this good. guy's a brother brother in Christ, and he's trying to compliment you. So I think he is. He's saying, David's wife is hot, just saying. So count your blessings, <laughs> loser. All right? Yeah. All right, guys, catch you all. I don't think I'll be going live tomorrow, but, uh, yep, I will be definitely be posting a video tomorrow. So oh, catch okay. you all then. Christ risen, risen indeed. Take and, care, and Sam, Sam, uh, tell everyone again where they can see you tomorrow if your voice holds Soko, up. Soko, Soko Films, the YouTube channel, Soko, S-O-C-O -O Films, Soko Films, YouTube channel. It's going to be 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They've already got it announced. Mm -hmm. So pray for it. All right. Catch you all later.